Marilyn Monroe was a true rags to riches story. Born to a schizophrenic mother who was committed to a mental institution, she went from an orphan to the most famous woman in the world. But crippled with depression, a drug addiction, and mixing up with the wrong crowds, her death remains a mystery to this day. Was it suicide or murder? That's today on Death in Entertainment. Live from Los Angeles. 911, what is your emergency? Here in Hollywood now. And two counts of murder, injury, and death. Oh my God! Shocking new details that has stunned the entertainment world. Um, this makes me a little nervous. The hair stood up on my arms. Just like in the movies. <gasps> what do you call this thing anyway? Death in entertainment. Hello, hello, hello. What's up, man? Hi. <laughs> hello. What's going on, guys? Oh, we have made it to episode 32, a highly requested episode from the uh, the die heads out there. Yeah, we're taking taking a lot of requests these days. We have to, I feel like. Send them in. Yeah. We work for the people. We, we <laughs> yeah. are champions of the people. We're civil servants over here. Yeah, we are here doing the Norma Jean, a.k.a. Marilyn Monroe episode. My name is Kyle Plouffe. My name is Mark Mulcairn. I'm Alejandro Dowling. And we got a doozy to get into. Yeah. I want to say it's the most convoluted Hollywood mystery since Natalie Wood. Yeah, it's up there she with those before. with those weird assassin. Yeah, this way before. I'm talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking in die pod terms. Oh, oh yeah. gotcha. Yes, like the uh, the smokiness, you know, around it, not knowing exactly, you know, who's doing what, what's doing who, and uh, who's killing who. <laughs> I think we're gonna solve it today. To what, be honest, really, yeah. I we're, think we're, we're getting gonna down to it. We're going to make some breaking news tonight. We're gonna, we might. Yeah. You never know. This is uh, saucy. <laughs> People come here for breaking news uh, from 1962. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Why don't we just come out with it right away? She was spotted down Lancashire pushing a cart. Yeah. She's still alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was at the Whole Foods, um, uh, the, the Amazon Whole Foods on Lancashire. Yeah. Looking yeah. a little rough. Yeah. She was eating pizza right out of the box. <laughs> and then she Ain't no just shame in that. <laughs> threw the box down on the ground yeah. and stomped on it. She's a yeah. litter bug. And then Hasselhoff got on his hands and knees and started eating out of it. Oh, well, I will say people in those days littered like crazy. Like my uh, my grandparents <laughs> would just would just throw trash in the ocean. <laughs> 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 they had a beachfront property like right next to uh the airport like Logan oh, nice. Air. yeah that they that, really kept that great location kept up with it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that great uh seaside location and they just throw trash in the fucking ocean yeah every day just like wayne's world where they're just like sitting there <laughs> yeah. and the fucking hair is just <laughs> flying just <Yeah>. bring <laughs> they would even save the rings from the coca-cola cans for the ocean for the yeah. ocean yeah they try to find dolphins to uh to put it in their snouts and stuff yeah what's with your family dude why are they gonna beef with the ocean i don't know they're um my grandfather would just like tee off trash into the ocean <laughs> like he was like with a golf club nice dude yeah i'm not like them you know <laughs> <laughs> gonna distance it's myself just a generation <laughs> yeah like my generation we're just we're gonna finish off the planet <laughs> yeah <laughs> they hit him with a couple jabs we're coming with the right hook yeah yeah we're taking you but tko we're not earth. Them down <laughs> tko earth <laughs> Pow. Fuck you, earth. bam right yeah. the kisser how you like me now <laughs> All right, well, this episode is going to take us all the way to August 5th, 1962. So, uh, if, if we're talking about what's going on around this time... What's let's, going let, on? Let's talk about the top five songs around this time, Kyle. Is that okay? Uh, I mean, I guess. I'm going to start with number five. Number five is the big hit we all know, Ray Stevens' Ahab the Arab. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That sounds what? politically correct. Yeah, exactly. This is like, um, I don't know what to make of this. I don't even know what that song would sound like. Uh, it sounds like it's a uh, love letter to the Alphabet Bomber's brother. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> to bring in the Alphabet Bomber again. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is what the kids were getting down to, I guess. Uh, number four. The Orlons, probably the worst name for a band I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> the Orlons, the Wa Watusi. Do you remember Wachusett? Uh, Mount Wachusett. In- Wa Wachusett. Yeah, they stole that riff from, yeah. from that. <laughs> some regional New England stuff. Um, okay. Brian Highland, Sealed with a Kiss. Oh, that's a good one. I thought that was Sealed. 
No, that's, that's Kiss from a Rose. Ah, from the Batman Forever soundtrack. Let's go kiss. <laughs> Number two, Neil Sedaka. That sounds some like someone. Breaking up yeah. is hard to yeah. do. That's a big song. Breaking up is hard to do. You know, breaking up <laughs> is hard to do. Oh, we got a I can't tell Alejandro if this is actually here. real or not. Yeah. It's oh, real. Oh, we're oh. just making this up. <laughs> 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 Two di- very different songs we just sang. <laughs> Newsflash. It's actually one of my favorite oldies. Oh, Breaking really? Breaking up is hard to oh, do. Oh, wow. Okay. It's so catchy. And it's Neil Sedaka at his greatest. You're a Sedaka head. I wow. am. Yeah. Because <laughs> Alejandro's going to cut his own podcast about <laughs> yeah, this one song. Yeah. My mom had Neil Sedaka's greatest hits Ooh. playing in the minivan. Did she have the record or did she have the CD? Yeah, they Both. shoved a record in the, <laughs> yeah, in in the, the minivan. minivan. <laughs> <laughs> and it we just would, melted. We would listen to in it. In the engine. In the minivan <laughs> and then go home and throw on the vinyl. <laughs> nice. That's a real rocking house you had up there yeah. in Wisconsin, yeah. All right, number one, Bobby Vinton, Roses Are Red, My Love, which is famous from the Goodfellas soundtrack uh, when they were in the uh, um, Copacabana. Roses oh. are red, my love. I just love. thought he was a really smart guy. <laughs> Remember when they, uh, they, they go down there yeah. and they're dating and stuff and she's getting swept off her feet? Bada boo, bada ba. He did Blue Velvet as well. Yeah. Big from the um, David Lynch movie. Yes. Yeah. A lot of good movies for Bobby Vinton. I know. On a lot of hot soundtracks. A lot of royalties. Yeah. Yeah. Good fellas. Forget there about it. Go. Forget about the it. The Blue Velvet royalties? Come it's got to be yeah. worth a billion dollars. <laughs> yeah. He must be looking at his mailbox every day. What, what do I get today? Okay. We want to check out some movies. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. Out. August 5th, 1962. Yes. We got King Kong versus Godzilla. Which huh. also came out two years ago, re-released. It's funny they they keep making that fucking movie. Peter Jackson did the, did the last one, or uh, is that... no, I don't. But think it's Peter based Jackson off the Peter that. Jackson reboot. I think so. I liked the last one. I saw it on a plane recently. I, I didn't mind the last one. So well, wouldn't you know if it yeah, was, that was based King Kong on Godzilla? It? I don't know. I don't know anything. I just watched a fucking movie. I'm not researching the <laughs> King Kong movie. I saw it on a on a plane two years ago. So you know, they I, say I, that's the definitive way to see it. I have a couple, on an airplane. Yeah, yeah, well, I have a couple drinks on plane, so I don't remember <laughs> half of what goes on up there. You watch King Kong movies. I watch <laughs> little peep documentaries. Yeah, you say potato, I say potato. <laughs> yeah, and I watched La La Land, and I actually enjoyed it. Yeah, whatever blows your hair back. As long as it's not La La Land, get yeah. the fuck out of here. <laughs> There's something <laughs> right deserve to lose the moonlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something about watching a movie on a plane. It feels like you're getting something done. Like, oh, I've been meaning to see this, and I have three hours now just sitting. I here, know, so I can see it. If you're not watching a movie, like you really hate are you movies. even living? Yeah, are you living? <laughs> are you a fucking live out there on JetBlue? <laughs> if I'm, yeah, if I'm on JetBlue, I'm usually watching like ESPN or something. But I feel like airplanes. It's like I'm I'm being held hostage anyway. So it's like I'll watch just anything. I, yeah. I never see anything on I can it. Never I'm like, I've been waiting up, for this. I can never make up my mind, though. I'll just have a couple of drinks and just listen to music for a while. Yeah. Or I'll turn on the news, but I try not to do that anymore because yeah. that fucking rots your brain. You take your mask off and you talk real close to people. <laughs> yeah. Freak them out. <laughs> I just started uh, coughing like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like I get the black lung. <laughs> So where are you from? Yeah. I'm from Weymouth. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Once... I can't afford a doctor right now, so, but I can afford a plane ride You're from coast to I'm coast. I'm on a buddy pass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One dude looked over at my screen once and was like, Dodgeball, I love that movie. I'd be like, it's none of your fucking And I'm wax. embarrassed because I'm watching Dodgeball. That's not a now bad Now you thing. got this guy commenting on it. So now I'm insecure watching it thinking like he's watching it too. So I'm afraid to so change it now. You're giving yeah. him one ear pl- <laughs> earpiece. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're sharing one like, headset. Yeah, it plays on <laughs> yours too, buddy. Yeah, no shit. I don't talk to anyone next to me. Dude. Never. I didn't invite it. It's the only time I'm actually rude to people is when they're trying to talk to me when I have headphones on. Yeah, like Uber drivers or something, and I can see them talking and they're turning around like ah, and I'm like, yeah, 
just like making it known, like, I'm not talking to you. I'm listening to whatever the fuck I'm listening to. Leave me alone. Yeah. That doesn't sound so horrible. <laughs> just going, yeah. Yeah, but like a dick. <laughs> There's, there, I've talked about this before with you guys privately, um, but I never do it publicly, like on this podcast. Um, but when I go to 24-Hour Fitness, there's a bunch of insane people in the sauna there that just have wild things to say. So even if I'm listening, I have music on or not, I just have my headphones in. Yeah. Just for an excuse not to talk to these lunatics. Oh, my God. They're fucking crazy. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And definitely have the headphones on. <laughs> yeah, because that's... And cranked. I'll take them out for a second. I just hear all of a sudden, yeah, I'm going to start bringing a gun to work, you know? <laughs> it's, like, it's the craziest people yeah. in the world. And then I put it right back in, or I just leave. <laughs> just like... It's that that's the moment where it, your headphone falls off. Yeah. 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 My buddy Will in New York, he's really? a comic. He was uh talking about like ten years ago, he was on the treadmill running and some guy was trying to talk to him and he's like pointing at his headphones, like, No, I can't hear oh, you. Yeah, yeah. And the guy kept trying to talk to him, he just kept pointing at it. And then the guy finally just like goes away flustered and uh he realized that after the guy left his uh cord was just hanging connected to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> so the guy knew he was full of shit the whole time. <laughs> he might have had something important to say, too. I'm afraid of that all, all the time. Like, if someone just yells at me from a car, like, while I'm driving, yeah. I'm thinking, like, a, there's a baby on the roof or something. Yeah. Even, even though I don't have one, like, it yeah. could, like, my, you know, your car is on fire, you know? Yeah. I've had that happen where someone will come and tap me or be like, excuse me, sir. And then I'm like, what? And they're like, oh, you dropped your wallet. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, <laughs> I know. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's usually the case. So movies. Right. That was just one. <laughs> oh. uh, here, I'll just run through the list quickly here. I Thank a Fool, a crime drama starring... Peter Finch. Wow, we talked about Peter Finch. He was a uh, very inebriated um, uh, Irish actor who was in Network. I like him already. Who, uh, oh, you know, yeah. You know him. Yeah, of course. He couldn't take yeah. it anymore. Yeah. Remember? He, he bought the bar. He bought the bar. <laughs> yeah. So, that so they we could... bought the bar. <laughs> and they were on the lash. Yeah, on the lash, we called it. Yeah, him we can't and, have any more. We can't have you, Michael. <laughs> uh, we're having many more. <laughs> yeah, we'll be having many more. Who, who was that guy's name he was with? That uh, was Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole. Oh, Right. Yes. The final movie on my list here is called Zots. Z O T Z exclamation title. point. Oh, don't forget That's the like exclamation. The Orleans point. of movies. This is from William Castle. He was a showman. Okay. The greatest showman? Like a, Not the greatest. Like a, <laughs> but he was a showman. Yeah. <laughs> no, Second greatest showman. Like a carnival barker for the movies. Oh, yeah. Oh, like okay. Barnum and Bailey. Yeah, yeah. And he would do gimmicks like for the Tingler. The movie, the tingler. The, the hey, get seats over here. I'm give you the tingler. <laughs> the seats would buzz, <laughs> and then yeah, and it was just him going <laughs> <laughs> for another movie. He had four life insurance forms in case you died of fright. You had to sign these. Shut forms. up. Yeah. Dude, that's fucking amazing. I actually like that. And for this movie, that's Zots, smart. the theater patrons received a full-size plastic replica of the amulet from the film. Wow. That's crazy. That's exactly what we were kind of talking about um, during the Twilight Zone episode where we were talking about how uh, <laughs> Anaconda and like Twister were movies that you know people were saying, like, people died in the movie theaters. And yeah. so you mm -hmm. want to go flock to see it. This guy was trying to create that buzz for himself. Yeah. Sign even this before, form. Even before people if you died. Die yeah. Yeah. From watching this movie. Yeah, that creates word of mouth. And like he knew how to make yeah. buzz work. And people were like, oh, you got to do this thing. I think that's still on today. Everyone oh, wants to create sure. some bullshit buzz about things. Yeah. That's how I saw Spider Man. The recent one, it yeah. was in 3D, but the seats would move and they would squirt water out at you. They had blinking lights. This Buzz is your of, ass. That was it the tingler. You a little bit. <laughs> the tingler. Yeah, that was the tingler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was another of Carpy's nicknames, too. The tingler. The tingler. Yeah. <laughs> well, that reminds me of the mangler. Remember that Stephen King movie, uh -oh. the mangler? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and John Waters for the movie Polyester. It was released in Odorama, so everyone yeah. got a card. It's gross. A scratch and sniff. Yeah. So the yeah. movie would prompt you to scratch the card. They should do more shit like that, you know, to, just to, you yep. know, make a splash. Bring the 80s back. Bring the 80s back. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, yeah, so those are all, that's what's going on at the time of uh, our subject's death. Yeah. So let's get into it.
Marilyn Monroe. She was born Norma Jean Mortensen on June 1st, 1926 in Los Angeles, California to her mother, Gladys Baker. Uh, Gladys Baker was a single mom. <laughs> no one's got the same names in this family. I love the attorney. Like. No, because the, the identity of her father is actually undetermined. And her mother put on the uh, scandal birth certificate that the dude's last name was Mortensen with an unknown address. So we don't even know if it's the real name of the guy. He's never been identified as far Maybe as Maybe she, she was referencing the coffee, like Mortensen's coffee. Could be. She just went by that, yeah. Never heard of that coffee. Me either. I just remember it from <laughs> Mad Men because there was an old coffee brand called oh. Morton's. I'm sure it got bought up by Folgers or someone else, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Gladys Baker was a single mother. She was living in Hollywood working as a film cutter when she became ah. pregnant with Marilyn in 1925. In other words, an editor. Yeah, I guess. But I don't know if she had creative control. Maybe yeah, because some like, people just cut the film and then editors actually, you know, put everything together. They were in charge. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So you could be She just had the scissors. You're splicing the Godfather and you're like, here, Coppola, take it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> In December, it's a division of labor. I respect that. <laughs> and the rest of that person's life, they're like, hey, I spliced the Godfather. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, they're drinking at some shithole in the valley. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, you still got to pay the bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I spliced the Godfather. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> uh, in December of 1925, shortly before she was about to give birth, she headed to Hawthorne, California, which is where I lived Your old stomping for the guns. first four years I lived in California. Um, Hawthorne is home to the Beach Boys. It is home to Russell Wilson. It is home to Marilyn Monroe. Yep. And it is home to my first apartment in California. Wow. Oh. The most important yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She grew up on 137th Street, and I was 17 blocks away in 120th Street. Is there a museum there where where you where your apartment was? Yeah, where mine is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Did you ever go check out her birthplace? Um, yes, it's still just a house. There's nothing commemorating it. The Beach Boys house, however, is commemorated. Um, it was plowed over with the use of eminent domain. They put the 110 right through their house. So they leveled it, Whoa. put the 110 there, and then they put like a shrine next to the highway. It's right off the highway. Mm. It's so really they weird. really didn't have that much respect for it. They no. they, they just leveled it. Uh, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they they wrote and produced the first three albums or something like that. Yeah. And they, they kind of created the band and the dad beat them into being a good band. And they're like, yeah, yeah, people need to get to Rosecrans. Get out of the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Joe, uh, 46 year old from Ohio, needs to go on a fucking Goes, uh, needs casting to go to the call. Commerce. Yeah, yeah. He, has go, he has to go on a casting call in Culver City for a thing he'll never get, <laughs> which he should give up. Yeah. Um, so this is where like parent issues start already for poor Marilyn. Uh oh. So her mother, Gladys, was like, I'm going to go to Hawthorne. I'm going to move in with my mom and, you know, I'll stay there till Marilyn's born, then we'll leave. Uh, she had no idea that her mother, Della, actually had other plans and left to set sail in Borneo. Oh, Borneo. Yeah. I'm Borneo hearing about this. <laughs> <laughs> to make I wasn't Borneo yesterday. <laughs> Hello. Marilyn's not even Borneo yet. <laughs> so she's like, sorry, you can't live here. I'm going to go make up with my ex-husband because he's working in the oil fields there and uh, we need to make up. So I'm out of here. Bye. Arrangements were instead made for Gladys to stay across the street at the house of Wayne and Ida Bolander. Just they, random people they just met? They were the uh, neighbors across the street who are a deeply religious couple uh -oh. that served as foster parents to several children. So they kind of already were like taking people in anyway. Oh, they're giving probably getting government money or something. For <laughs> take, no, they, they a they lot of foster kids. Yeah, they get they get money and stuff. Yeah, I have a scumbag aunt that um <laughs> that took in foster kids just to get money. She's like, they pay you. Yeah, and I was like, you're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> they pay you, Kyle. Yeah, she's like, if you if you don't have kids, you just get foster because they oh pay you. God. Oh my god, I don't want to know what happens after that. And no follow up questions. Her foster <laughs> kids got taken away. By the way, oh good idea. So Gladys was like I said, a film cutter, 
but psychological problems prevented her from keeping the job, and she was eventually committed to a mental institution diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. Ooh. She had too many ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and the auteur director's like, would you just shut your yapper and cut the film? <laughs> that film cutter to mental institution pipeline <laughs> is hot and running around this time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so after that, uh, Norma Jean spent most of her childhood in foster homes. She was in 11 foster homes. And spent two years in orphanages Damn. until 1937 when she moved in with a family friend, Grace McKee Goddard. But unfortunately, when Grace's husband was transferred to the East Coast in 1942, the couple couldn't afford to take the 16-year-old with them. Ugh. Norma Jean had two options, return to the orphanage or get married. <laughs> so she returned to the orphanage, I assume. <laughs> Norma Jean entered Van Nuys High School in September of 1941, but her days were numbered. Over there. Wow, um, Van Nuys High School. That's crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. right down the block. I yeah. Know. June 19th, 1942, she got married to her 21 year old neighbor, Jimmy Doherty, at 16 years old. Uh, so she was dating Jimmy for six months. And Jimmy Doherty. Jimmy Doherty <laughs> said she was a sweet, generous, and religious girl. She liked to be cuddled. Jimmy said this? Yeah. <laughs> religious. Yeah. <laughs> well, it didn't last long. Hey. Uh, she liked to be more than cuddled, too, by the way. Um, by all accounts, Norma loved Jimmy, and they were happy together until he joined the Merchant Marines and was sent to the South Pacific in 1944. If he had a beautiful girl like that, you know, why would he just sign up for the Merchant Marines? And he was not a looker at really? all. No. Yeah. yeah, I've seen pictures. We'll post it on the, on the, <laughs> Crater the Instagram. Face? Yeah, not even that. It's just like... <laughs> I mean, compared to what she could get later. Well, like, yeah, Jimmy next door, married to Marilyn well, Monroe. <laughs> L.A. didn't have like hot people yet. It was still like yeah. uh, a bunch of schmucks here. Yeah, <laughs> and, and walking up and down streets in Van Nuys. It is for, true. Looking for hot girls. <laughs> Until like the '60s and '70s, they still allowed like ugly people on TV and movies and stuff. So you yeah. are correct. Yeah. yeah, even Jimmy Doherty could be a leading man at this time. He could. Yeah, the fucking Rico schmunt. Suave over <laughs> Rico, here. Yeah. <laughs> He's what? like the Ryan Gosling of Jimmy his era. Suave. <laughs> yeah, when I first got here, I had to wear a paper bag over my head. <laughs> they ease you into it here. Yeah. Uh, so while Doherty was in the Merchant Marines, Norma found employment at a munitions factory, and she was spraying airplane parts with fire retardant and inspected parachutes. I think that word has been outlawed. Yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> she had some odd jobs here, we're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, during this time, there was an army photographer that was going around the factory, like taking pictures of people like a creep. He finds this beautiful brunette who was standing there and he took a picture of her for Yank magazine. Okay. So that's a porn <laughs> which, magazine. Which was not Playboy magazine, yeah, by the I, way. Yeah, I, I got it for the articles, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Was this a patriotic magazine or a porn Oh, rag? like Yank, like Yankee. It might be Yankee. Or is it a double entendre? No, I think it's Wonder Yankee. <laughs> 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 Yankee Spanky, it's something, man. I don't know. Yankee Spanky Doodle. <laughs> Yank my doodle. It's a dad. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, I, I bet it was patriotic. It could have been, but it sounds bad. It sounds very bad. <laughs> yeah. So this photographer, David Conover, uh, we, we can thank for Marilyn Monroe because he encouraged her to apply to the Blue Book Modeling Agency, which was like the top agency at the time. Uh, she ended up signing with them and began like researching the work of Jean Harlow and Lana Turner. And she was told that they were looking for models with lighter hair. So that's when she was just like, so she was a brunette, bleach me, baby, to, uh, blonde. Okay, so and Norma made... the brunette becomes yeah. Marilyn the blonde. Ashley yes. Judd turns into Mara Servino. If we're going by the '90s movie that I yeah. saw, <laughs> that I saw, very good movie, HBO movie. Yeah. Norma Jean and Marilyn. Yeah, good movie. Uh, Lindsay Krause is also good in that. She has a thick accent. Okay. And you're thinking, who the fuck is Lindsey Cross? All right, go, Kyle. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Doherty was very salty about everything because Ooh. he's saying that had he not left Norma Jean alone at home, circumstances would have been very different for them. Well, you fucked up, Jimmy Doherty. Nothing like a Jimmy Doherty scorned. Yeah. Guys, you're being a little harsh on Jimmy Doherty. That was what happened back then. It was actually quite common. Yeah, they would when go to war. They would go to war, which is yeah. not fair. Yeah. But then the women would go to work. 
and cheat. It, yeah, in the process, they would you know <laughs> meet other Yank people magazine. and get stuffed. They get, you the war, <laughs> war. You love get that the term. Tingler. You love that term. Ever since that Joe Rogan interview, the, <laughs> Phil Hartman's wife got stuffed. Oh, did you get stuffed? stuffed. War changes a man. That's true. And war changes a relationship. It yes. really does. Um, he was saying like his absence created two different people. Norma Jean and Marilyn Monroe. So he's trying to take credit for that. Yeah, for the kind HBO of movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I demand royalties. Yeah, yeah. He, he didn't take cre- credit for it, but he said his absence created it because his absence created um, her to meet people, encounter forces beyond his control that changed his naive, uncomplicated Norma Jean into an ambitious, calculating career woman. Can I give you a scenario here? Say like your your ex-girlfriend from college or something, you know, you see her on Facebook and you're like, you know, that's some spank bank stuff that, you know, sure. old pictures. Yeah. Imagine this guy seeing Marilyn Monroe, oh. all, the, all these movies, <laughs> and hanging out with the Kennedys <laughs> in like naked in, mo- in, in, you know, Yank magazine. This yeah. guy's like, his bla- brain is exploding. Like that, yeah. was, that was my Mine. Mm-hmm. Now I fucking lost it. I'm a schmuck. I'm a schmuck, I'm, I tell you. I'm a schmunt. <laughs> I'm a money loser. Yeah. It, I'm a bum. That had to have been hard to live with. I know. Well, I, I, I <laughs> but I imagine the looks he got, you know, when he was like talking to other girls, like, yeah, I used to, uh, <laughs> my previous girlfriend. Oh, are you the loser? You <laughs> <laughs> really? Did you know give him an up and down like you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so modest. He's like, yeah, no big deal. But it's because of me she became Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, yeah. no worried about. It. That's a bold statement. Doherty, when he was with the Merchant Marines, he was sending several letters home, uh, telling her, "Stay with me, please." <laughs> he said, "When he comes home, she's giving up her modeling career." <laughs> That's how men were back in the day. Like, this is what I'm. What Jimmy ain't no dame of mine. What see? Jimmy says goes. You see what Jimmy <laughs> says goes. Okay. <laughs> I bring home the bread. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm the man of the family. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah. So a dissatisfied Norma Jean, who now saw the possibilities of a modeling career, decided then to divorce Darty, which is crazy. A woman in 1946 being like, "I'm gonna leave this, this guy." Yeah. Very very rare. She probably wasn't worried about being judged, though. This might have been like a saving grace for her, almost like not having her parents around, because that's what people fear the most is the judgment of their parents. Yeah. And she's just like, you know what? I'm an orphan anyway. Fuck you guys. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. She was way past that with all those foster families. Yeah. I can imagine she just had total confidence in her actions. She didn't owe anyone anything, really. She was kind of flying by the seat Mm -hmm. of her pants and, you know, doing her own shit. Yeah. Um, so then she becomes Jean Monroe. She's like talking to these modeling agents and all this stuff. And they're like, you know, um, she wanted to follow in the path of her idol, Jean Harlow. And Jean Harlow used her mother's maiden name, Harlow. Mm. So Norma Jean was just like, you know what? I'm going to switch it up, use Monroe. And they settled on Jean Monroe. But the agents were like, there's too many genes. There's like tons of them in the movie yeah, we industry need, we and need stuff now. fresh here. Yeah. So... He suggested, this dude Lyon suggested Marilyn, commenting that she reminded him of Marilyn Miller, a sexy 1920s Broadway actress. Hmm. So he said it it has a nice flow. It's got the double M. You're going to be fucking set if you go by Marilyn Monroe. So she was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it. Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. So that is, is yeah, 1947. So she's modeling, and then in 1949, she finally gets her first movie role. Um, she had like a couple really small ones, but this was the first like decent sized one, which they actually didn't discuss this in the documentary. But Love Happy was in 1949. It was the 14th and virtually the last, is how they describe it, Marx Brothers movie. Mm. <laughs> um, it had Harpo Marx, Chico Marx, and a smaller role than usual for Groucho Marx. He was getting a little long in the tooth. Was he? (laughs) Like, this guy's going to get out of here. (laughs) Yeah, get over here. So that was her first. She had a small role in that, and people, like, really noticed her. She ended up getting put on a poster. And then the uh, Asphalt Jungle in 1950, an Academy Award-nominated film noir directed by John Huston. Houston. Oh, it's Houston? Houston, yeah. yeah. Is that like a Houston's dad? Yes. Oh, wow. And grandfather of Jack Houston. Houston. Uh, Houston. Houston. What's with you guys? Hust- well, there's it's no O. Houston. It's not it, like Whitney there's Houston. There's a H-U-S-T-O-N. It's fucking confusing. Huston. They have a street here spelled the same way. It's called Huston. Yeah, it's probably after him. 
Are you a fan of Angelica Huston? Yeah. <laughs> Why isn't there a no? I love more Trisha. Yeah. Uh, so Asphalt Jungle came out in 1950. The caper film is based on the novel of the same name by W.R. Burnett and starred in an, an ensemble cast including Sterling Hayden, Gene Hagen, another Gene, <laughs> Sam Jaffe, James Whitmore, and in a minor role, again in Asphalt Jungle, Marilyn Monroe. She was pretty much unknown at the time and was not mentioned on the posters or the marquees, anything. But that would be the last film that that would happen. Could Ooh. you imagine having Marilyn Monroe in your movie and you're not even putting it on the poster? Yeah. Yeah. She's like fucking fifth build. Not even. If yeah. that. Yeah. 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 And She's student number seven. <laughs> yeah. Craft services higher up on the call sheet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so things start picking up. July 18th, 1953. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is released. Do uh, they? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is a 1953 film adaptation of the 1949 stage musical released by 20th Century Fox. Rest in peace. <laughs> November. No, they're, they're still around. <laughs> yeah. I might add Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is the one with Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. Yes. Yes. The video that Madonna famously stole. Stole. Yeah. <laughs> November 5th, 1953, How to Marry a Millionaire is released. Uh, How to Marry a Millionaire is a 1953 romantic comedy made by who? 20th Century Fox. Ooh. Do you Instrumental see? Instrumental in her career. Yeah. Oh, I get what you're going for here. She yeah. had signed with Johnny Hyde as her agent. Uh, and despite the fact that Monroe was nearly 31 years his junior, Hyde left his wife for her. Of course. Mm. He wanted to marry her, but repeat, she repeatedly refused his marriage proposals and said she loved him, but was not in love with him. So the whole thing with this guy, Johnny Hyde, man, what a story this guy has. He uh, was one of the most connected agents, if not the most connected in Hollywood. Connected in, in the industry, not like to the mob yet. We're not talking. Yeah, not the mob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll get there at some okay. point, but not with him. Yeah. There's not that much of a difference at this time, though, between yeah. the mob and the entertainment so industry. It seems like what. Yeah, I know. Well, you will talk about that. But it seems like to me like she kind of. You know, maybe she dated him a little bit or something yes. she, in order to, to get ahead. So, like, fuck this, this guy. This fuck is where, Hyde. yeah, we start figuring out, or she starts figuring out, she has the perfect temperament for Hollywood. Yeah. She's got the looks. She's got the flirty, flirtiness down. She's a smart chick. She works people a little bit. She's she works also, people for sure. She's a good actress. Yeah. Yeah. Damn good actress. <laughs> Her best acting <laughs> is done off camera. Yeah. Like, going through she all plays these the game. people. She yes, plays exactly. The game. Yeah. She has the perfect temperament personality and looks for hollywood and to become what she became well i find people that grew up in hollywood are so much better at navigating all the weirdness of it because they kind yeah. of grew up in it you know yeah because you it's a very odd dance that you're playing <laughs> yeah. out here so johnny hyde was william morris yes i hate to say it but she utilized the casting couch yeah of course that's what I'm saying. Her best acting is off screen. Well, it hasn't been confirmed, but you know, her Oh, no, it's been confirmed. It's confirmed. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because before Johnny Hyde, you guys are going to love this name. She was the lover of an influential Fox executive. I'm getting that right here. His name is great. Okay. Joseph Skank. <laughs> <laughs> it's spelled S C H E N C K. Oh, yeah. my God. It's pronounced Skank. Skank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that not. You know, when a name just fits. Yeah. yeah. It would be like if instead of Harvey Weinstein, it was Harvey Skunk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we noticed that the last two movies she was in, when she's starting to blow up, 20th Century Fox, Joseph Skank was the head executive at 20th Century Pictures, which quickly <laughs> merged. I imagine every morning he's like, who's going to fuck up my name today? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry Gob. It's not Shank. It's Skank. It's Skank, <laughs> fucker. <laughs> you got to call me Skank. That's like a Coen Brothers character or something. Yeah, just for yelling real. At people. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's Skank! <laughs> and then he dies. It's that, <laughs> it's that old uh, root beer commercial where he's like, uh, he's like, why do you want to work here? He's like, oh, I've always wanted to work at Dumbass and Dumbass. <laughs> yeah. oh, I remember that. He's like, the name is Dumas. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Skank's tombstone, says, it's Skank! <laughs> exclamation point. <laughs> so this fucking Skank. Uh, 
He created 20th Century Pictures, which quickly merged with uh, Fox Film Corporation, becoming what we know today as 20th Century Fox. As Disney. Well, yeah, yeah well, Disney now, now. No, but it's not. I'll, I'll explain the difference. They spun that off to be part of Fox, which is the Fox that is um, that is the Fox News Channel. So uh, Disney is not 20th Century Fox. They're two different entities. But the Simpsons, who always aired on Fox, are on Disney Plus now. So they do have access to their property for sure. Yeah. I. Uh, it's I, weird. I'm pretty sure they own the movie studio. With- no. Okay. Now I know what I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah, they own about. the movie studio, not the TV channel. Not the TV channel. Okay. Not the yeah, TV yeah, yeah. channel. Yeah. 20th Century Disney does own, but the channel, Fox, when you turn it on cable or whatever, they do not own that. That is owned by the same oh, okay. uh, thing. Because I think it's there's like so laws they have an and iron stuff. Iron grip on just their TV just channel. Just the broadcast. <laughs> yeah. Rupert Murdoch. That and the family still own that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so confusing. Like, I'm like. Blue in the face right now trying to understand all this shit. <laughs> so Johnny Hyde, you know, got her connected with Skank. Uh, they were both... <laughs> and other Skanks. And yeah, skanks. they were both infatuated with Marilyn, and they both wanted to see her succeed. So, like, you have two of the top the top executive and the top agent at the time that are like, yeah, let's fucking put you on. Let's do he, this. He's like, you want to see Skank? <laughs> yeah. Yank? <laughs> yeah. November 5th, 1953 is when How to Marry a Millionaire came out. December 1953, a 27-year-old Hugh Hefner launches his debut Playboy magazine with the sweetheart of the month, who just happened to be who? Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. She was on the cover of the first ever Playboy magazine in 1953. How old was she? She she was 22? Uh, 23? 53, 26, 36, 46. She was 27 as well. 27, okay. She didn't pose nude for him. She was only on the cover and in the centerfold. It was already pictures that were taken for another calendar that he bought the rights to. Yeah. And this is exactly when she had like her first two huge movies. Yeah, this like is the a star. Well, the movie she was already too, a shooting sure, star, yeah. and this pornographer comes out with a fucking magazine. It does wow, well. You're really uh, downgrading yeah, Hefner. He, he was Christ. just a pornographer. Yes, yeah. he's just a pornographer. Come on. Yeah. He was an artist. I read it for the articles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was a publisher. No, we go to Yank magazine for that, ah, buddy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was also a bachelor. He was. Yeah. Till and the a end. Pipe smoker. I yeah. mean, okay. Uh, there was over <laughs> fifty thousand issues of that Playboy magazine that got sold for fifty cents a pop at the time, which is so a, it a made lot of him. money. Not made her; it really made him. Yeah, she was oh. a rising star that he hitched his wagon to. I feel like, yeah, he caught the right girl at the right time. And it uh, must have been annoying to deal her to deal with all these scumbag guys uh, <laughs> around Hollywood, like and especially half with this, that later on in life with those two, the uh, three girls and stuff. What the yeah. fuck was going on there? Three. Much no, more no, than three. no. Well, the yeah. ones but yeah, I know, married. The married, yeah, yeah. yeah. In the, the grotto e, and the E show girls. The E the show grotto. girls. Yeah, what the fuck? And think of the casting <laughs> couch when there was no net yeah. and it was just happening in the depths yeah. of Hollywood. We think it'd be yeah. good for this part. What do you think? What say you, kid? <laughs> I'm skank, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just you and skank in like, the room. Why yeah. do you keep saying your name, Mr. Skank? <laughs> Skank wants you to sit on my lap. Yeah, he speaks to the third person. Like, like <laughs> Skank really likes you for this picture, huh? Skank really thinks you'd uh, be good in the second act, huh? Skank's not even the biggest skank in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Skank's getting tired now. Skank gotta go home for the day. Skank's sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> skank uh, is not 100% right now, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now I feel like this is where like the very early seeds of reality TV and just like tabloids are like kind of coming to fruition. Her and Joe DiMaggio met each other. They got married January 14th, 1954. And they were both just mega stars at the same time. Just like I feel like J-Lo, Ben Affleck, it's like all the same shit. Joe DiMaggio, there was no bigger athlete. Yeah. Star. Baseball yeah. star. Right. Yeah, the the Yankees, fuck them. But you know, that was still like the biggest uh, biggest squad they had and most famous ever. Yeah, he was also mentioned in that Simon and Garfunkel uh, song. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Oh, right. And he hated that. I heard he hated <laughs> Where that. Have you gone, Joe? DiMaggio. He thought people were saying like, you know, you're a nobody now. Yeah, that's what he thought. Uh, it was pretty sad because he came out and was like, you know, I've done commercials. I write a little oh, bit. Did he really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really weird because <laughs> and Paul Simon is like, no, you don't get it. Yeah. It's a metaphor. I'm yeah. talking about 1950s. Imagine Paul Simon culture. trying to like, let me explain this. To 
to you, man. For a very successful and dominant athlete, uh, he seems very insecure. I think so. Completely. Yeah. Which we're going to find out very quickly. Okay. Uh, so in January of 1954, they get married. Uh, he has a trip to Japan for business, which they used as the honeymoon. Um, so for two weeks, she took a secondary, secondary role to him as he conducted business. And uh, she told a reporter, marriage is my main career from now on. Well, she's acting there, too. She's a good actress. Yeah. Off camera, Kyle says. That's right. <laughs> September 15th, 1954, Marilyn Monroe films skirt scene for the movie The Seven Year Itch. Yeah. Billy Wilder. Yes. Yeah. The scene was originally filmed during the early morning hours of September 15th, 1954 at the corner of Lexington Avenue and 52nd Street, which I did not know. I lived in New York for six years, never knew that. Hmm. You probably walked over it and felt oh, the yeah. wind, and you're like, ah, big deal. Oh, yeah. I took my pants off, put my <laughs> asshole above it, and I air this shit out. You put on a hula skirt? Literally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there was actually over a 1,000 people that showed up when she was there, and they're all right behind the camera. They were going so nuts that they couldn't get the scene done. The director actually had to tell the crowd, like, if you guys chill the fuck out, We'll have her take pictures and sign autographs for you after. Yeah. And they're like, all right. So it's a moment where everybody knows this is a classic moment happening. Yeah, they were all trying to see up her skirt. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of scumbag <laughs> kids from the Bronx. I, get, I mean, but, back in the day, people would freak out if you showed an ankle. This, this chick's yeah. got a skirt over her head. Oh, that was... Forget about it. That you, skirt scene yeah. that took everybody by storm. There's some Brooklyn dead end kids like, yeah, I want to see your, uh, I want to see your ass. You say <laughs> it's such an <laughs> iconic scene till you like live in New York or just even visit and you smell the air that comes out of the vents. Oh yeah, it's, it's disgusting. It's gross, I'm like yeah. Marilyn's vagina probably smelled mm. disgusting. Oh, oh. Asol, <laughs> we were doing so good. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But you're right, though. It smells like the depths. I'm not wrong. The depths of, like, the train mixed with, like, gasoline. Piss and, other, and yeah, rats. Yeah, yeah, rats. <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's like a thousand rats breathing up. <laughs> yeah. So our buddy, Mr. DiMaggio, was so angry about this scene that he uh, actually beat her that night. <gasps> yeah. Oh, so he wasn't a nice guy. No, he was very insecure. He was an acehole. Acehole. He's like... Are you cheating on me with hot air in New York City? <laughs> Are you cheating on me with the vents? <laughs> Why are these rats blowing up your skirt? <laughs> your pussy stinks. <laughs> it smells like pizza. Yeah, I didn't know he got down like Brooklyn Italian guy. It does not smell like teen spirit in here. Hey, va <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he, uh, he roughed her up that night, and... Um, her makeup artist has spoken publicly about it, saying she had to cover up the bruises with heavy makeup for the rest of the shoot. What a wow. prick. Yeah. What is Another going? reason to hate the New York Yankees. Fuck them. Go Sox. Joey Baseball, you fucking scumbag. David Ortiz would never do that to you. Yeah, he's probably on the juice. <laughs> no, probably I don't on... know. I just think he's a fucking pussy. Yeah. Fuck Joe DiMaggio. On the shit list. Yeah, put him on the list. And all the Yankees. Fuck them all. Fuck you, Jita, too. Coming after you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Aesol. Uh, <laughs> Aesol. <laughs> December 1954, shortly after the completion of the Seven Year Itch, Marilyn formed Marilyn Monroe Productions. So she was very business savvy. She just, you know, knew what she wanted, was going after it. She was going to bang whoever she's going to bang to get sure. it. Sure, yeah. But, but she's going to get her money. Yeah. She's going to get her money and her vision out there. Yeah. She co-founded it with photographer Milton Green. And this formation of this company will become of significance with another husband in a little bit. Okay. On Halloween, October 31st, 1955, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio get divorced. Good. They showed clips of her like coming out of the courthouse. Did you remember that? Mm. And she's like, Amber Heard, I feel like, studied that. And was like, I'm just going to make the same pouty face that she's making as she's walking out of the courtroom oh, and like really? talking about it to reporters. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. were trying to talk to her about it. She's like, I can't talk about it. And ran away. But didn't you, <laughs> didn't you show a clip I, on your Instagram somewhere where she was like, fine. And then she put on her like sad face. Oh, Amber Heard. Yeah. 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 Marilyn Monroe was a good actress. Amber Heard is not. Yeah. Yeah. She's a hack. She was also <laughs> mimicking Johnny Depp's clothes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's there's crazy. There's a leak in the boat on his team that's telling him, uh, telling her what he's dressing like. I don't understand yeah. how she matches his clothes every day. 
It's very weird. Or maybe they're putting this together and they're doing like an Andy Kaufman, Ooh. Bob Zabuda type thing. Hey. It, it was weird. Did you see her the other day? She was wearing a pirate's bandana <laughs> <laughs> and she had a full and beard. She was Jangly dressed, pearls. She was dressed like uh, Johnny Depp from The Rum Diary. <laughs> <laughs> from Benny and June. <laughs> <laughs> 21 Jump Street. She should have done that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> yeah. That would make me like her. Yeah. <laughs> Benny and June. She's got it all on. <laughs> or what? It's eating Gilbert Grape. Yeah. yeah. But the mom. Yeah. yeah she DiCaprio. breaks a bed. <laughs> you know how I said, I just used the word crazy when describing Amber Heard in court. Crazy. Drew Barrymore on her show just said something along the same lines. Like, and oh, it's crazy. Apologized. And she had to apologize for saying that. Oh, get we, out live of in, here. we live in crazy times now. It's bonkers. Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah. I don't want to live. In, we're not asking to live in the time where, like, Joe DiMaggio, you can, like, beat your wife or something. But yeah, like... but somewhat close to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right when I That's start saying that, that, what am I talking about? <laughs> I want to go back to the caveman era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. When, you, when you just went like, Ugh! Yeah. yeah. I you, whittled my own bat. That I yeah, you hit a woman <laughs> over the head with a fish and drag her back home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Marilyn first. Husband. And there's no cameras. <laughs> yeah. A skank is hungry. <laughs> Need to go hunting. <laughs> skank want food. Skank want movie star. Skank like you. <laughs> skank want tingler. <laughs> Bzz, skank is tingler. <laughs> Wait, Carpy, is that you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Evil Edric Man, is that you? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> Pacino, get in here. Whoa, whoa, what do we got here? Joe DiMaggio. Great skank. Ooh, we got a skank here. Ho, ho. Who's getting who skanked? <laughs> Hoo <-ah>. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> so June 29th, 1956, Marilyn Monroe marries Arthur Miller. The playwright. The playwright. Uh, Death of a Salesman fame. Yeah. Ever heard of it? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Big one. D talk about death of a marriage. <laughs> um, oh, boy. <laughs> so shortly after their marriage, the couple traveled to London to make a film called The Prince and the Showgirl. What is he doing in this movie? Is he the director or something? Or is she's the actress? This is her first movie being created under her production company, Umbrella. Nice. So it's like a very big thing that's happening for her. Okay. So during the film shooting... In London, the, the, it's like a phenomenon that she's even there. They got press everywhere. They're going crazy. She's the, a worldwide phenomenon. Yeah, at this point, she's full blown Marilyn. Like, oi, Marilyn Monroe, Mar 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 <laughs> Marilyn Monroe has landed. Crikey! <laughs> <laughs> Steve Irwin was there. <laughs> <laughs> the a little there. baby, a baby <laughs> Steve Irwin. Crikey! Look at Crikey! <laughs> <laughs> One day you're gonna be killed by a stingray. <laughs> <laughs> that was like my Ringo was, yeah. the, was the dad there. <laughs> that was definitely one Ooh, of the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> Coco for Yoko. Uh, uh, she stumbled upon Arthur Miller's notes, which were like scattered around the uh, the hotel room. Yeah, and she found some not so flattering things about herself in his notes. She's quoted as saying, "It was something about how disappointed he was in me, how he thought I was some kind of angel." But now guessed he was wrong. Oh. He said he'd married a woman as flawed as his previous wife had been. What a douchebag. And he calls her specifically a whore. Oh, in, my in God. In these writings. Jeez. Yeah, he was pretty much like, uh, after we got married, I found out my wife was a slut, and I'm not happy about it. You know what? Death of a salesman stinks. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's so boring. Overrated. Not as much as her subway vagina, though. <laughs> Oh my. I, am, I don't want to go that down that That sounds like an off the, off the menu order at Subway. <laughs> when Jared worked there, yeah, yes. Jared, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have the uh, Subway snatch, please. <laughs> I would like the Jared special. <laughs> yeah. And then, then you get arrested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they put you in the cell with him. Yeah. <laughs> They put they get they give you his big pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he hangs himself with the big pants. <laughs> the big pants. <laughs> but it doesn't work. Uh, Three kids fall out. Jared tried to kill himself again. Yeah. <laughs> his pants are too big though. Yeah. He keeps falling through the pant leg. <laughs> it's gonna uh, be one of those days. June 13th, 1957, The Prince and the Showgirl is finally released. Um, it's really weird that they 
stayed together for so long because she knows like all this stuff that he said about her at the time, but I don't think she ever confronted him about it. When did they marry? Uh, 1956. But it's just a year. Yeah, but I'm kind of skipping ahead because in 1960, very early 1960, Marilyn Monroe receives her first Golden Globe for Best Comedy Actress and splits with Arthur Miller right around the same time. I thought you meant she split the award. No, no, no. She split from him. (laughs) Sean Penn gave her the idea. (laughs) You can cut it. You You can can smelt it. it. (laughs) (laughs) We were smelt it, dealt it. (laughs) (laughs) And that was for Some Some Like It Hot, Hot, which received five nominations at the Academy Awards in 1960. So that happens, I think, I believe it was March 8th. 1960 that Marilyn Monroe got the Golden Globe for Best Comedy Actress and I believe it was right before that she got divorced the same day President Kennedy was inaugurated. Wow. Coinc- dun, dun, dun. Coincidence? She moves on. When she's ready to move on, she's ready to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the stars aligning. Yeah. But this was a long marriage for her, especially with how many problems there were and she knew that he thought she was a whore but also, in the first year. It's very possible that she had already had relations with uh, our President Kennedy. Um, not only is it possible, it's confirmed. Oh, oh really? Okay. Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I'm interested in the fact that Marilyn, um, you know, she when she's ready to move on, she's ready to move on. I'm yeah. Sure. yeah, she's out She was there. done with that guy, Miller, probably within months of, oh, for of sure. being married to him. He was probably morose. He gave, like, you know, geeks a fucking... You know, a wish. You know, they they thought they were like they could get any girl they wanted. Seriously, that's the whole that's thing. the problem like, we're dealing with right now. This <laughs> was like when Julia Roberts married Lyle, Lyle Lovett. Lovett. Yes, ah, that's hilarious. Same and, same dynamic, kind of like who's this? Yeah, fucking... but was Lyle Lovett like a cocky prick after that? No, no, Arthur Miller. It's like, dude, who do you think he you thought are? he was? Someone special? He's yeah. some, some schmuck from Connecticut. <laughs> is he from Connecticut? <laughs> that's how I think he is. Yeah, <laughs> no, because I know his daughter is Rebecca Miller, who married um, Daniel Day Lewis. Oh, yeah, Rebecca Miller. Yeah. Oh, Arthur yeah. Miller grew up in Harlem. Okay, well, I, they settled Still. in Connecticut. Fuck them. They white flighted out of you know <laughs> <laughs> those bastards. <laughs> Arthur Miller, you scumbag. You fucking scumbag. Well, he's not the one who beat her, but he's, he's a scumbag anyway. No, yes. he was just was talking shit to himself on paper. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck? I don't Is write that shit. worse? I don't write anything <laughs> down except for bad joke ideas, bad <laughs> tweets. Yeah, not right. My wife's a whore yeah. in all caps. <laughs> for my, sa- I'm just in saying, my handwriting. I'm saving this for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for, for something to do tonight. So. Who wrote this? Yeah, I uh, did. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> you signed it. Yeah. Why are you signing your own fucking journal entries, <laughs> you weirdo? Uh-huh. Nice question. And he doesn't even realize how lucky he was. Yeah. You know? like By all accounts, very yeah. smart, very funny, yeah. thoughtful, but also social climber. Well, you got to take care of yourself. So, you got to, especially so. she knows she grew up understanding that, you know, no one else is coming to help. I got to get mines, as they say. <laughs> as they say <laughs> in those days, I guess. <laughs> oh, I got the Norm MacDonald joke here now. Okay. Julia Roberts told reporters this week that her marriage to Lyle Lovett has been over for some time. The key moment, she said, came when she realized that she was Julia Roberts and that she was married to Lyle Lovett. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that joke now. <laughs> I remember she went on Howard Stern and he's like, what are you doing with that fucking guy? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about train wreck interviews. Yeah, I love it. I loved it. I loved it. Oh, I loved goes it. Wasn't that the last hard. time she was ever on? Yeah. Yes. 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 She was yeah. like, I'm, this is not I don't think she, even like the new <laughs> refined Howard Stern, she won't even come back for that. Wow. Uh, so two years later, May 19th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe sings, happy birthday. Mr. President <laughs> to wait, John are, F. Wait, are you playing that or is that Yeah, no, Marilyn Monroe's in this room right now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being a little shy, Kyle. <laughs> Why don't you really sing Sorry, it? Sorry, my tits aren't out. Hello. But, um, Happy birthday, <laughs> Mr. President. I would be like if if she was doing that in front of me and I was JFK, I'd be like, dude, 
what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> well, yeah. She's what, practically, are you, what are you trying to do to me here? She's practically having sex with him on stage. I yeah. know. <laughs> Approximately 17,000 people filled Madison Square Garden, which I did not know that was at Madison Square That's Garden. That's a lot of people for a birthday party for a president. On the evening of May 19th, 1962, to take part in a gala which fe- featured Jack Benny and a host of stars among them, Maria Callas, Ella Fitzgerald, Jimmy Durante and Peggy Lee. That is actually a who's who. Of That's that a time. good lineup. There's some. Name I in only there. know Ella Fitzgerald and Jimmy Durante. Who the fuck is everybody Jimmy else? Jimmy Durante. There was Durante. some na- name in the. Inca, inca, do. Hey, I'm this crazy guy. <laughs> yeah, he just did weird stuff like that. Yeah. Who is the other one you don't know? Peggy Lee. Peggy Lee. Are you kidding me? Who the fuck is that? First of all, she did the song. Is that all there is? Is that all there is? Is that all there is <laughs> to her career? She did the music <laughs> for. Uh, she did the racist music for Lady and the Tramp. I am Siamese, <laughs> if you please. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. She did the song. You give me fever. Alejandro knows like wow. A lot of older this is stuff. Cra- you, yeah, I'm an old soul. You're, You're an, an encyclopedia. Yeah, you are. I can't believe you've heard of Peggy Lee. No, but one you of are- the most famous singers ever. I. I, I Seriously, it's Taylor Swift, Peggy Lee, yeah. <laughs> Madonna, and then a uh, fucking <laughs> insert a funny rapper. Name. <laughs> Little Kim, two chains. There you go. <laughs> but I think it's crazy that there's this many people that go to Madison Square Garden for the president's fucking birthday. Nearly That's, sold out. Yeah. Like imagine going to Joe Biden's birthday at fucking Staples Center or Fuck something. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would go to that. And like Dua Lupa or whatever her name is is playing. Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa is yeah. playing oh like God. Dua Lupa. You two are back and forth with the pronunciation. <laughs> Dua Lupa. No shit, man. Dua Lupa. Dua Lupa. Dua Lupa. <laughs> I just, I never knew that was at MSG. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. I always figured it was in DC somewhere at the Kennedy Center or whatever. Yeah, that would make more sense. But it's in New York City. They're partying, you know, people getting the tingler. Yeah. <laughs> people getting fucked up. Peggy Lee shaking her thing. Some people yeah. getting fucked. Peggy Lee singing racist <laughs> Siamese songs. Some people are getting stuck. She didn't know it was racist then. <laughs> no, nobody did. No. August 5th, 1962, Marilyn Monroe dies. What? All right. What? Good night, folks. Good night. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye. Hello, nurse. She was 36 years old. She died in her home. On August fifth, nineteen sixty-two, uh, she lived in Brentwood, Ooh. and was found by her psychiatrist. She was found with an empty bottle of sleeping pills next to her bed. There's speculation over the years that she may have been murdered. However, go on. Ca- I think it's pretty obvious at I this think point. From here on out, we're going to make two cases: the case for murder and the case for suicide. Ooh, two Which buttons. one first? Murder. You're like the prosecutor. Let's here. fucking do it. Isn't that going right to the dessert? Yeah. Yeah, why not? (laughs) Um, It was pretty common knowledge that she slept her way around Hollywood to gain power. We didn't discuss it much in here. She had these marriages, but there were many, many affairs all over Hollywood that uh, could make you some enemies. Frank Sinatra? Possible. Not confirmed. Dean Martin? Possible. Not confirmed. His wife, by the way, in the... You mentioned the documentary a couple times. Mm -hmm. It's the Unseen Tapes, the new documentary. Which is on Netflix. It just came out last week on Netflix. Dean Martin's wife is one of the interviewees, and she had an interesting thing to say about the Kennedys. Is she still alive? I don't know. Okay, go ahead. Jean Martin, funny enough. Yeah. Jean and Dean Martin. She said they were hound dogs, basically, that they could hardly control themselves. Oh, they were fucking everybody. Their dad. Sucking and fucking everything. Joe (laughs) Kennedy. (laughs) Joe Kennedy was the same. So it was like father, like sons. Yeah. They didn't even conceal it when they were at parties or other places. No, they because were... the internet didn't exist. You didn't have to. And one time she felt a hand on her breast, and then John Kennedy, oh, it was me. <laughs> it was uh, me there. It was me that had my hand on your breast. <laughs> Want to go upstairs? That's not even exaggerating. <laughs> Would you uh, like to see my cork? <laughs> Here, have some popcorn. <laughs> I am wicked hot. He shakes the bucket <laughs> by his waist. <laughs> Will you feel my penis? I am not going to fuck you because you're easy. I'm going to fuck you because I am hard. <laughs> I am a tall palm chump. 
<laughs> How did they get so many women with those accents? I know. They're the only people in Massachusetts with those accents, by the I, way. Yeah, they're like over it's the top. Very weird. Yeah. Hey, I am doing this. Say chowda. <laughs> I don't know. I saw the town. Yeah. Well, they hit Ben Affleck. It goes a little over the top. <laughs> Who's Kawi, <Kyrie>, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> I put this fucking town in my rear view. Talk about my town in my rear view. Is if, that my daughter in there? Is that my daughter in there? <laughs> if it was really about Boston, they'd be like, what bus we taking, dude? Yeah. <laughs> uh, What's up, dude? So one of her very good friends who was married to the owner of the Romanoff's uh, restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, it's a now defunct Beverly Hills star haunt. Everybody would be there. Wait, the, what? The who's who of who the fuck who cares? cares. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like a Musso and Franks or a yeah. Chase. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. yeah. It was like a hot spot. It was a hot spot, yeah. Like Ciro's, which turned into the comedy store. Yes. And I love that they preserve some of those restaurants still. Oh, yeah. You can yeah. go there like Musso and Franks. Yeah. And right next feel. to Jameson's on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, I didn't know that's what no Jameson's thanks. was. Yep. And it, <laughs> you can feel the history. Yeah. Then you can go outside and find a hooker. Like, you can go outside and find a homeless person taking a shit. Kind of like the. <laughs> <laughs> can we just go straight to that? <laughs> uh, like the Tam O'Shantern in uh, in Glendale. I don't know if anyone. Would you call there. me the Tam O'Shantern? Is a uh, it's where Walt Disney used to go to to eat dinner and stuff and mm. have drinks. To after cheat morning. on his wife. Too, uh, <laughs> And they still sit him out there at the table. He's yeah, frozen. He's frozen as shit, yeah. <laughs> they have to keep the freezer plugged in by him. He used to go there to uh, plot the destruction of Jews. Whoa! Oh okay. That's just opening a can of worms now. Wow. In, in L.A. of all places. Um, okay. So her, her good friend, like, they knew each other for years. She even said that uh, Marilyn moved from front group to front group very quickly and never came back for anybody else she would just be like done with you as soon as she got what to she needed from jump you, to from gone. you know from cloud to cloud just, yeah. just moving on yeah total social climber and some people just have that instinct and does very well for them she had that but she's broken up marriages and she's moved on from men very quickly so it's like people will leave their wives for her and then she's on to the next guy that's going to make the wives pissed. That's going to make the guys pissed. Mm -hmm. You're making a lot of enemies very quickly. So you're trying to build the case that, you know, like eventually it's going to come back to you. There's going to be some blowback. Yeah, there's some cosmic uh, energy you're putting out there that's gonna not be very some good. Blowback from the blowjobs. Hello. It sounds like you. Oh, man. <laughs> I just heard Mark's <laughs> joke. <laughs> now I'm distracted. Are you blaming Marilyn? No, mm, she was playing the game she needed to play at the time, but that's not going to make people in the industry love you. It's going to make fans adore you because you're going to be in everything and you're going to be the main star, yeah. but you're also ruining families by fucking these guys. Well, fans are everything. Yeah. You hear that, fans? <laughs> well, I here's <laughs> what I think about that. Once you cross over into the city limits of Los Angeles, Hollywood, yeah, you're all holes are all, open. All holes are open. No <laughs> holds barred. Sorry, like if it if you're like fucking uh, a, a starlet, it's your fault, buddy. If yeah. you're breaking up your own family, it's your fault. It's buddy. on you. It's not Marilyn Monroe's no. fault. Yeah. He's fucking just trying to get work. And you have to yeah. take personal responsibility. She's been had her, you know, back against the wall since she was fucking born. Yeah. So horrible. Fuck you. Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff we haven't discussed yet. Uh her affairs with Bobby and Jack Kennedy, otherwise known as John F. Kennedy. We would like to uh run a train on you. <laughs> John Fitzgerald Kennedy. There we go. Like Ella. Yeah. Fitzgerald. No, no, no relation. No relation. No. <laughs> Marilyn met the Kennedys through her forays with Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack. Ooh. She also A had... bunch of Vegas skanks. <laughs> yeah, <it's Vegas> skanks. <laughs> She's got the L.A. skank. Yeah. She's got the Vegas skanks. Yeah, Joey Bishop. Ooh. <laughs> and she had an affair with... Peter Lawford, right? It's alleged, yeah. Who and was married was, to one of the Kennedys? Yes, Patricia. Sisters, yeah, Patricia Kennedy. He was married to, yeah. and he was very good friends with Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Would you uh, like to fuck my whole family? <laughs> Will you fuck my sister? 
<laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> They're sharing the mistresses. Even. Sharing is caring. <laughs> Not only within the brothers. Hit that G spot circle. <laughs> <laughs> but also the brother in law. Yeah. You take her now. It's a big sucking fuck fest. It really yeah. is. <laughs> like, this is what's going on. And I don't think they care. Like, instead of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, it's yeah. Jack and Bobby and Patricia. Marilyn. And well, this is even before, this is before that movie. Yeah. Before, like, you know. The sexual revolution. Yeah. The 60s peace and love era. It's crazy. I think it was just more out in the open because the, they were very public people. All of these people were. And the gossip rags at that time yes. would protect powerful people if they exchange favors which was covered in la if you ever see la confidential it's fucking amazing and it covers this period of time perfectly great movie yeah i still haven't seen it only mulholland drive we'll, we'll go on some great this is... something about the, the greatest movies and then at the end of it kyle just say i haven't seen it was limp biscuit on the soundtrack <laughs> what about hoopa stank <laughs> which one did kyle raise his hand that he saw in the theater oh dr parnassus he he rushed out to see that <laughs> yeah yes. but no thanks <laughs> yeah, la yeah, confidential this great kick-ass movie <laughs> yeah. you know he went to go see bob zamuda live yeah <laughs> at a show where there's like yeah. there's like five other people listen corky romano is my favorite movie ever <laughs> okay the coke scene is funny this could be kyle's last cookies. week last week on depth and entertainment <laughs> <laughs> Robert Pattinson actually said that once that Corky Romano is was his, his favorite, favorite movie. Oh, he's fucking around. Yeah, he's trying to be cool. He's trying to be funny. <laughs> I'm in the Batman and Corky Romano is my favorite. Oh, movie. I'm in the Batman. I'm Oi. fucking, yeah. I'm Crikey. Golf <laughs> Batman. Crikey. Stingray. <laughs> so she was banging John F. Kennedy uh, while he was a senator. Nobody knew him in California. So he was just like walking down the street. Nobody was like, oh my God, it's fucking JFK. Yeah. Like Obama before he ran for president. Yeah. Yes. Jeff is like, oh, I would like to hit that. Before Gl- Blagojevich was trying to sell his seat. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He Ob- gets a bad rap. Obama <laughs> went to, to Occidental College in uh, in East Hollywood. Mm. Yeah, he went to grad school out of So the crazy thing is, let's count how many marriages she had. Three. In the 50s. Oh, well, that... I- Jeez. That's a little harder. You're narrowing it down. Yeah. <laughs> so Doherty's out of here. Don't we... leave long gone. He's dead. <laughs> yeah, Doherty, they got divorced in That's a lot of 46. In 1940, who cares? She's keeping her lawyers busy. So she was single, but then she, you know, she was sleeping around. She was banging Fox executives. And then in the 50s, she was married to Arthur Miller and Joe DiMaggio. Uh it is alleged she was banging JFK throughout the entire decade of the 50s. Wow. While, while he was a senator. Yes. That's so where it all started. She really had a vision because she's at Playboy first. She latches onto Kennedy right yeah. away. She could also pick really good movies that showcased her. Yeah. And, you know? And they said that nobody saw JFK becoming the president. Like, nobody. It was just such a weird thing that just fucking... Definitely told. not Nixon. Yeah. It no really shit. wasn't until that debate. Yeah, where, where Nixon looked like a sweaty bastard and JFK would look like a calm, composed yeah. guy who was deep down, he was on a bunch of amphetamines and stuff and like pain <laughs> medication. The first TV... I'm on OxyContin. I am on TV unanimate. friendly president. Yeah, t- very TV friendly. And that's, like, that's part of what I'm saying. This is a time when like TV actually was a medium that mattered now for Mm. presidential politics. Yes. So she was banging JFK for a while and then was like, uh, I'm going to go after your brother now. So she was banging Bobby Kennedy after JFK, but they had the more serious relationship, which I didn't know. I thought it was always JFK. She was more in love with Bobby. Yeah, which is weird. And He's he not had, a looker. He had like eight kids. Oh not Kyle a has so many opinions yeah. on lookers. Bobby's not a good looking guy. They wow. look like twins. Uh, JFK was like a kind of handsome guy. Yeah, Bobby look, had a longer face and he was like weirder eyes and stuff. Yeah. Like droopier, weirder eyes. Okay, so you would do JFK. Oh, yeah, I would definitely not RFK. fuck Bobby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah murder, murder. Not a looker. Bobby Mur- couldn't even watch, if you know what I mean. What Ma- does that have to do with it? All right, so <laughs> marry, marry, fuck, kill. Uh, Ted? 
<laughs> I'll Ted, do this Bobby, one. and JFK. JFK, RFK. I mean, you always got to kill Ted. <laughs> or he's, or he's going to kill, kill you. Kill you. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's going to throw you off the bridge <laughs> yeah. and tap a quid. <laughs> no, he's going to give you a nice ride off it. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you Your Uber has arrived. Yeah. I got to swim back now. Do you like Splash Mountain? <laughs> Keep your seatbelt on. Yeah. I told you I'd get you wet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. My mom's gonna kill me if she hears it. My parents love the Kennedys. Keep your seatbelt fastened till we've come to a complete stop at the bottom of the river. <laughs> I mean, you come to a complete. I'll be swimming to Hyannis. Uh, <laughs> and one day, Kyle's boss, what's his name? <laughs> From that comics unleashed, <laughs> Byron Allen will produce a movie about this oh, incident. No, he didn't even produce it. He bought it. He threw his name all over it. Yeah, Entertainment Studios. What they do, it's such a stupid. Wait, give some give us some background now that we're talking about. Yeah, so <laughs> he's got a bunch of friends with a lot of money, so they buy the studio's B sides that they're they filmed but will never release. Mm. And they go, all right, you're not going to release that. Give it to us. And they go, okay, we'll give you U.S. rights to the theaters. But once it goes on demand, we're getting all that money. If it goes overseas, we're getting all that money. Um, so it's like really a bad business. So he, okay, so it's some hack business, but it's kinda, yeah, yeah. He's so not it, any money. it's the same way he would go to press junkets and act like these yeah. are big Barbara Walters interviews. Yeah, he's exactly. Doing. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so her relationship with Bobby got her caught up in a very intense situation with uh, who else? Jimmy Hoffa. What? Oh. Jimmy Hoffa's entering the fray. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Solidarity. <laughs> That anti-aging technology. Yeah. Ooh, I'm a young guy now. <laughs> yeah. I'm wearing a hat. I I'm still, a different age. I still Ooh. can't bend over, but I look young. <laughs> Ooh, I'm a milkman now. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, I got a truck. I'm a labor leader. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know where I'm buried. <laughs> Ooh, killed me. Geraldo, <laughs> what do you say I am? <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby Kennedy... Uh, was like going after Jimmy Hoffa hard. He knew that Jimmy was like a piece of shit crook on the take. And Bobby was like, this will not stand. And I have morals. No, he, but can I because play? he was the attorney general of yeah, the United States. And he I, would go after the mob, too. Can, yeah, I, yeah. can I play devil's advocate here? You sure can. I don't know if you're going to get to this. And I hate to uh, get in front of you here. Oh, but, get out of my way. But this is what happened. Like, I, Sam Giancana was a big mafia guy in Chicago, and the mob was very intertwined with Jimmy Hoffa and the Teamsters. And so they really helped get JFK elected president in 1960 in West Virginia and also in uh, in Illinois. Ooh. In very contested areas. Wow. And, and uh, uh, the Nixon people could have did some you know, response and said, hey, we want to fight this, but they never did. So they got lucky. All of a sudden, the mob and Joe Sr. helped fucking get his son elected using his old mob ties through pro Prohibition, in which Ooh. he was like a bootlegger. He used like these mob people. And then once he, uh, JFK became president, he puts his fucking brother in, which angered everyone. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. like, no one puts their, br like, imagine Bill Clinton puts his fucking scumbag brother, Roger <laughs> Clinton, in. <laughs> But I, this is a different Or Billy Carter. Thing. But obviously RFK. Billy Beer, remember that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously RFK is not Billy Beer. So yeah. So we know that. But also, it still pissed them off because they're like, wait a second. We just helped you become president or your brother. Yeah. Now you're the attorney general. And you're going to fucking start coming after us. You got some uh, balls on you, kid. That is pretty fucking crazy. Yes. It's a death warrant. Sam Giancana, uh, uh, Russell Buffalino, you know, if you saw the Irish. Vinny Boombots. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Strombone. <laughs> like, uh, Tony know, Gabagool. Ricky the Screwdriver, you know. <laughs> Joey the Neck. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Ankles. Uh, <laughs> Tommy Tubby. <laughs> <laughs> Teabag McGlone. But you know what I mean, though? You'd be yeah. equally as pissed as all, all of a sudden you put all this manpower and you look. That's the big thing with the mob. They don't want to look like schmucks. Yeah, I would think it would be stupid for him to do anyway because he comes from a criminal family. 
like not even with all that extra, like they're actually actively helping them, like trying to get into office and everything. Yeah. He literally is the son of a fucking moonshiner. Yeah. <laughs> like, what yeah. are we doing? Like a bootlegger, a <laughs> prohibition. Yeah. And a horrible womanizer. I, I think they do. They were Joe just, Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Also, too, because he went back from to RKO, who he had a lot of money in as a movie studio, and he was doing the same thing in like the 1920s with yeah. women. Yeah. So he was doing the same thing JFK was doing. He basically just, he's like, it's like that drug commercial. I learned it by watching you, Dad. Yeah. I learned it from you, Dad. <laughs> yeah. Wait, you're saying the Kennedys invested in RKO? Yes, with prohibition money in the 1920s. Do you want to know what's really crazy? What? 1925, Gladys Baker was a cutter. I didn't say what company it was, but she was a cutter for RKO. Well, how crazy would it be if this that, was all a fucking was work? That was Joe's fucking daughter. That oh, would be fucking God. nuts. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy wow. shit. You said we were going to solve this thing. Wow. I don't think we're going to solve this thing. Wait a second. Yeah. And he, didn't Bobby get her pregnant at some point? Um, Arthur Miller did. But possibly Bobby. There's a theory that Bobby got her or pregnant. Or possibly JFK. But if they're in the same bloodline... But that kid would have turned. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why but do with, we have with, with the why, am I a candidate? Why, <laughs> with, with the with, with, why do we have a mongoloid child? <laughs> no, but if the kid had the accent too, I I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Are you my mother? <laughs> Is that my mommy in there? <laughs> <laughs> he's, just, he's just like a big like 40 foot tall monster that, <laughs> that has a Boston accent yeah. it looks just like Ted Kennedy yeah. except a small form yeah. he's the fucking iron liver with legs <laughs> yeah. we can't even get into the Kennedys because this is just the beginning I know think of all the Kennedys later, the later but that is yeah. the craziest theory that we just kind of came up with it yeah was, I didn't was, mention our because I didn't think anyone it wasn't of any significance. No, because but if you knew that, that's such a crazy no, thing. No, I, I, I did a I all did a, ties together because that was 1925 when she got yeah, knocked up. Yeah, I did a report on Joe Kennedy way back in the day. Oh wow, in college and stuff. So I kind of re I retained so I retained nothing from college. But this, <laughs> I guess. Okay, I like it. Yeah, yeah. She, Interesting. She worked there for you know a little bit, so. Not unheard of. Good old yeah, Joe were, could have oh, been coming through. A lot of secret kids I'm, out there. The workplace and her ass. I'm going to fuck my way through this fucking movie studio. <laughs> There's another kid, too, like a boy. One day he comes up like, I think you are my father. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're arguing. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> you fuck my mother. <laughs> I, I hate the mafia, too. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bury Joe. Jimmy Hoffa. I killed Hoffa. <laughs> no, I killed Hoffa. Yeah, I killed Hoffa. <laughs> I'm done with this conversation. <laughs> I'm done with this joke. <laughs> Whoa, what was that? <laughs> the mic was done with everything. Wow. Um, so Hoffa, the crazy thing, he ended up hiring some goons to wire Marilyn's home and her phones to, quote, create a defamatory profile on Bobby Kennedy. Well, during this time, everyone was wiring everyone. The, yeah. the technology must have been like brand new because Hoover was wiring fucking everyone. Yeah. Well, it's crazy because she was also being tapped by the CIA at the same time because she had connections to communists in America and expats in Cuba who just happened to support the cash. Okay, we're, get, we're going down a rabbit. We're going That's all, what I'm saying. We're going Oliver Stone. It's to, true, though. <laughs> That's true, though. It's 100% true. Really? She has yes. Cuban ties. Yes. That were involved in the movie business? Obviously, it had to be. But I don't know, movie business or just like, yeah, just some buds. peripheral <laughs> yeah. friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so she had a CIA profile and like background, entire file being written on her because she was a, a communist risk to the country. Wow. So she was being targeted as a public enemy. Well, during the 50s, ev like everyone was basically. Everyone yeah. in Hollywood was. Yeah, it was the Cold War reconnaissance. Blacklisting and stuff. And yeah. Like, yeah. The Red Scare, they called it. Yeah. That's what they called it. <laughs> That's a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it was like bonkers. It was like everyone was like super fucking nervous. McCarthy was just like 
you know, going to yeah. everyone, assuming right off the bat that they were a communist. Yeah, McCarthy was going on communist, communists like fucking Bobby Kennedy was on Jimmy Hoffa. Like, hey, it was yo. Inter- he was invested. Like JFK was uh, banging broads. Hello. Yeah. Arthur Miller, <laughs> he considered himself a communist, so that's why they like all started with it. They were like, we got to keep oh, tabs yeah. on these high profile, very powerful people and make sure that, you know, they're not going to be uh, converting people to communism here. In through the, the land media. of democracy. Yeah. And J. Edgar Hoover was on her case, too. Hoover! And just... then Roy Cohn was somewhere in the middle of this whole thing. Um, somewhere. He was involved with Bobby, actually. Him and Bobby were going after a lot of people in, like, the 50s and 60s um, to, like, out communists and stuff. Bobby was not the great guy you you think he is. He, Who I thinks th- he is? I'm finding out. Now, I mean, I, people I, from Massachusetts idolize the Kennedys. People in Ireland idolize the Kennedys. Yeah, because they're the first. John F. Kennedy was the first Catholic, only Catholic president ever, except for Joe Biden. Is he Catholic or Christian? Joe Biden's Catholic, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, who? Once you're so old, it doesn't. Even, you're yeah. You're not even that thing anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're not even a person. Yeah, you just yeah. dust. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's trying to shake hands with people who aren't there. So <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. No, but what were we talking about? Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> so um, so she's fucking Bobby and Sinatra, Jack, yeah. Jack, Jimmy Durante, Ella Fitzgerald. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was told by Bobby Kennedy to never contact them again. The Kennedys, anyone in politics, stay away. Your cancer. Because the CIA was tapping her and Hoffa was tapping her and she had some loose lips. And I'm not just talking about her mouth. Hello. Yo. <laughs> hey. <laughs> she... <laughs> so, um, that was her above the subway. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> she, no, she's starting to vocalize more. She's starting to get hysterical about the situation. Well, and they even, want to control her. Not even but a, how could she not be hysterical? It, it's like Ray Liotta at the end of Goodfellas. She's got all these people watching her. She's being yeah. she's helicopters. On. Yeah. yeah. Just a mat. You're an orphan from Los Angeles, and now you're the president's side piece. Uh, you're getting information that you were never prepared for. You're an actress in Hollywood movies, and you're learning about nuclear ambitions that the United States has. And she's talking about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Exactly. No, so but- he's he's telling her if they strike, we're gonna strike too, and telling her like we don't fear using nukes. Like we're gonna she's do it. Probably afraid of the situation, like everyone in America was. Like, what is gonna go on? You know, with the, the nuclear yeah. you know, missile crisis, and. And then he dumbass, you know, well, he's about to fucking nut. It's probably telling him whatever the fuck she wants to know. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. She was, she got all these secrets, classified he, information. She's just talking about in a casual conversation on her home telephone. So she, and she's, you know, pills were the thing that did her in, but like allegedly, but she was on some stuff. It wasn't Remember, just. Remember, we're making the case for murder. I know, right no, now. but it wasn't just the <laughs> FBI no. dosing her with all these pills. She was, she'd also, she liked to have a drink here and there. Oh, for sure. She's yeah. human. Of course. They said they were the movie studios knew quickly that she was um a problem because she was mixing sleeping pills with booze. And that's like recipe for disaster. Yeah, that's not all good. the time. Yeah, and are really you getting bad. to something that's gotta give? Or no? No. Her last movie then was never completed. She was fired. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Because oh, really? of So she was getting the, fucked up. Yes. Yeah. Towards the end they were like, You're losing it. Kind of like Lindsay Lohanning it. Yeah. yeah. Not making deadlines. Like you're so showing up late. Showing up super late, yeah. That, they would I have heard the that, whole morning, and then she would show up in the afternoon. Fucked not, up. Not to train, change track here, but I heard that's what Vin Diesel is doing right now on Fast and Furious. That's why we're family. The, that's why the director uh, Justin Lin uh, quit. Oh, yeah. So yeah, it, because I'm he's been working with them for ten years. Well, he must be getting tired of it. And it's like he's like I could do whatever I want. How he many said, of those can you make? He said creative differences, but they still made him a producer of this last one. So. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe Just, that's well, you know we're we're ending on good terms, but fuck Vin Diesel for to bring being it back up to the Marilyn thing. I just think um, <laughs> no, I I want to stay on Vin Diesel. Yeah, let's talk about Vin, Vin Diesel, Diesel is like the current day Marilyn Monroe. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> except he's a dude. Yeah, <laughs> and he's a bad actor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's family. 
and he's got no blonde hair. Yeah. <laughs> On his head. No, but I could see this. You're, you're painting this picture that she was just getting too drunk, getting too chatty about yes. what she knows. Yes. Very. Uh, so once the career dries up and she's getting too fucked up, she, you know, what else does she have to latch onto? She has no husband around this time. She was yep. very vociferous. His, Hello. We're bringing it back. Finally got it in there. Wherever she went. <laughs> yeah. And she Absolutely. did make a scene at a party with Frank Sinatra. Oh, did she? Shortly before her death. Yeah. I did not know that. And I'm not going to elaborate. I was going to say, do you know anything else? <laughs> Frank is like, hey, Dame. You know, he's like throwing 20s at her feet. Like, Get out of here. <laughs> so she was found dead August 5th, 1962. As I said, the coroner uh, said pretty early that it was an OD possible suicide. There were no notes found. She had previously tried to commit suicide and always wrote a note each time. Ah, really? Mm-hmm. Mm. Rumors circulated. But you'd think the previous notes would suffice for the, the new suicide <laughs> attempt? <laughs> check my, I check don't my think draft so. box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she was pretty consistent. Everyone's with... writing notes and stuff to yeah. themselves, yeah. Yeah, what was up with Arthur Miller? Arthur Miller. Can't you keep that to yourself? Yeah. You got to write it down. Gee, my, my wife wife's is a, a floozy. Yeah, my wife's a pig. <laughs> yeah. Hi, honey. I'm just writing the next play. <laughs> <laughs> so people are saying she could have been murdered by the Kennedys, by the CIA, hmm. the FBI. Some of that's the same side of the coin. The Kennedys could have ordered her dead, and maybe that's where could have. the CIA they were gets all involved. involved. Yeah, Political sure. operatives that didn't want her talking to Castro's people. Mm. Jimmy Hoffa. Okay. His goons. There's like a lot of motives for people to take her out. There's too much risk that you're going to lose either control of your country or billions of dollars from some drug-addicted, drunk actress. Whoa, hold we're going to kill her. Well, at some point... I'm, that's the case for murder we're making here. If she goes way off the rails, you know, she's not making a good case for herself for being a legitimate person that anyone's going to listen to. Yeah. So she's that hammered and fucked up. And she's like, I, uh, you know, uh, fucked the president and uh, he told me the nuclear codes. People would be like, all right, you know, you know, tell me another one. You know, yeah, you think yeah. people are going to listen to you? Uh if you're Marilyn Monroe, yes. Yeah. I think you would listen. She's a person at that because time. Because she's yeah. beyond. She's yeah. an icon she's already. She's an icon, yeah. So it, it would make total sense if she's saying this stuff. Yeah, because. She, she must be right because we know that she hangs out with these people. Who's like a big starlet right now? If Aunt, Aunt, Kim Kardashian? Yeah. If Kim, <laughs> oh, if Kim Kardashian says, yeah, Trump told me the nuclear codes and stuff, I'd be like, sure, yeah, actually, yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like he he, he memorized. But what them? are the codes? Yeah, yeah. Um, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Coincidentally, I think it was today at the Met Gala. 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 You say gala. A gala. I say a gala. She went as Marilyn Monroe wearing really the Mr. President dress. Shut up, Kim Kardashian. Wow, that's so like hack. Yeah. But if there is a modern day comparison, I mean, don't. You dare? There's no way. Say it. Celebrity wise, what else like would level, you be referring to? Like level of she's baseball the, She's the most famous woman in the world right now, Kim Kardashian, for sure. What 100%. is that? No, but I'm talking Marilyn about Monroe. Looks, Monroe was the most famous. Glamour. No, I'm not comparing Sona. Not comparing. Okay, talents. so what do you compare? Beauty, popularity, beauty. No. Okay, then what do you compare? Popular popularity. She's the most not famous popular. woman in the world. She's people, not people like to hate her. All right. I, I mean, I'm sure people love to hate Marilyn Monroe too. I'm nah, but but women loved her. Yeah. yeah. If you see Mad Men, like uh, you know, uh, which is one of my favorite shows, yeah. which beautifully documents the sixties period. Going to the Mad Gala as Marilyn Monroe, it's like showing up at a Halloween party as Dracula. Well, the, it's just so <laughs> it has done. nothing. The, the theme it's this over. year was, was like uh, the Gilded Age. It has no big place deal. there. It makes yeah. no sense. Yeah. She ain't no man. <laughs> like, for some reason, I'm like the guy sticking up for the Met Gala theme. Like, hey, this is not good. Yeah, you knew the <laughs> yeah. theme even. Yeah. Well, I've been on Twitter today. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, obviously a bunch of different motives for people. Uh, Bobby Kennedy obviously lived in D.C. from Massachusetts, has no business in L.A., really. He was in L.A. the day that she died. They had a big fight. He flew into town. 
Cursed her out. He doesn't have a good history in L.A. No. (laughs) (laughs) Not his city. Not his city. Yeah, Yeah. He said, never contact us again. And then left shortly after. Federal agents from the FBI have confirmed this, that he was there right before she died. So he flew in at 2 in the morning. She was found dead at 425 in the morning. That fast? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And he flew out immediately. There's another version where he returned. He left and then came back. Possibly. And then another version is he brought Peter Lawford with him. Hmm. His buddy and brother-in-law. Well, that was more JFK's buddy. Not necessarily. Oh, because, yeah, the brother-in-law thing. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. Bobby Kennedy went there to talk, but he accidentally harmed her, like hit her or something. And then it escalated from there and they had to kill her. Yeah. And then he left. He took off. And Lawford was like the cleanup guy. Mm. Really? Yeah. And and took care of the mess, which is why I know you're going to get to this. The crime scene, just like Bob Crane, it was a disaster of a crime scene. Really? Looked totally staged. So in this theory- Disaster, but eerily clean. What I mean by disaster is not credible as a real crime scene. Yeah. So there's this guy, Reed Wilson, and he was uh, known as one of the most world's most discreet eavesdroppers in the country. Uh, So he was hired for many different reasons, you know, operative-wise, to be able to- Get the scoop from people just standing next to him. I, I wish I could have that job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he said her being murdered is baloney. He did say that Robert Kennedy was there at her home the day she, that she died, but he had nothing to do with her death. They just had a big fight and um, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is a big thing because he is the fucking attorney general of the United mm-hmm. States. Yeah. Like, that's not normal. Right. If, you know, who, whoever the the attorney general right now went to Kim Kardashian's house and just started fucking cussing her out. Yeah. That would be a big story. <laughs> it would. That well, Whatever his name. I, what's the guy's name right now? Uh, Garland. If he if he went to Kim Kardashian's house, flew to L.A. from fucking <laughs> D.C. and like and just started cussing her out. Who, Merrick Garland? Merrick Garland, yeah. <laughs> like that, that guy's got no balls. <laughs> like, I'd be surprised if he fucking, you know. Said two words. Yeah. That guy's a coward. So there's this reporter, Anthony Summers, who was talking to other reporters and they, you know, they were trying to figure out what was going on because they weren't getting answers from people after she died. It was all like being very convoluted Mm -hmm. and people were, you know, they were saying, I don't want to talk about this. I got to go. I don't I don't want to be the person who spills the beans about what happened. Blah, blah, blah. So they started playing detective and they found a helicopter pilot and they were like, can we see your logs? And he was like, sure. So they Dorsey should- Wingo. Wingo. Yeah. <laughs> the Wingo killed you, Marilyn. <laughs> uh, the pilot produced his logs. They looked through it and saw that the morning of August 5th, 1962, Bobby Kennedy was flown to Los Angeles and arrived at 2 a.m. Mind you, she was pronounced dead at 425 in the morning. Interesting. Yeah. This guy... Reed Wilson, who worked for, you know, federal agents being a eavesdropper, he was hired to go through Marilyn's house and clear any information that showed any connection to the Kennedys. Can I play devil's advocate? Sure. Mm -hmm. Why would you have Bobby take care of this job? Why are you having fucking Michael Corleone go take care of like yeah. some Mickey Mouse fucking bullshit that Fredo should be doing. Make because sure she's dead. Make sure she has dead. Because Jack go. is busy being president. Yeah, but there's not too the much, attorney general, anyone else. There's too much heat on him. Where's Teddy when you need him? She's not going to let in the goons. Like if Bobby Kennedy's there, she's in love with him. She's going to open yeah. the door. Let's talk. I yeah. want to talk and strangle you. <laughs> but like, yeah, send, exactly. Send in the Manson family or something, you know? No, it, <laughs> it makes sense. Bobby shows up. She's ready to play ball. Yeah, she opens the door, and then the goons walk in behind them and take care of her. <laughs> it also could have been an accident, I remember. The goons. Yeah. Another theory is he went there to reason with her. Yeah. And she wouldn't listen to reason. Right. So he had to kill her. Yeah. She must die. So... When he went through her place, like cleared every piece of information, any diary, uh, journals, whatever, any pictures, there was one photo that was left in her apartment or her house in Brentwood that survived. And it's the picture of Marilyn with both Bobby 
and Jack Kennedy, JFK, at JFK's party at Madison Square Garden in the green room before they're actually out there. Whoa. Yeah, crazy. But they left that behind. Not on purpose. And what about her little red book? Um, she, Don't know about it. She was vocal. Vociferous. About this stuff. <laughs> she supposedly had this red book, a diary, where she kept all her thoughts. Really? Yeah, and, yeah. And that was one of the things that Bobby came into town to get from her. Yeah. And to this day, we don't know well, the whereabouts of the Red Book. I could play devil's advocate and say, oh, yeah, that's, you know, you know, conspiracy theory, blah, blah, blah. But the weirdest thing in the world is JFK dies the next year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mind you, Bobby Kennedy is the one that steals JFK's brain. We yeah. talked about this before. Brain? We did, yes. but not, not on this podcast. Oh, was it a different podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I think we were, just, we were just, 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 just talking <laughs> shit. <laughs> no, I've talked about it on a podcast for sure. Okay. The, brain? Uh, RFK what? stole JFK's brain because it was uh, locked up in like a locker in DC somewhere. And he was well, like, that's this is my brain. <laughs> is this a Twilight Zone episode? <laughs> no, yeah. this is real. The brain's still talking. Yeah, like because I think the, the Oliver Stone movie jfk does say that the brain just went fucking missing yeah. i didn't know rfk, RFK stole took. it i didn't know yes that. i didn't know that you okay. are not gonna keep my brother's brain <laughs> you are my brother's keeper uh -huh. I, that's my brain <laughs> well if someone was gonna take it it should be him right i guess so but everything about this is so strange yeah and what do you know about this dr greenson uh the she, psychiatrist she from maryland she became very close with him during her final years, her kids hated it because... What? Oh, the doctor? Wait, who's Yeah, the kid? doctor's kids. Yeah, okay. Yeah, hated that he was so close to her because she um, would come over to his house for dinner and stuff. They had a very weird, like, therapist-client relationship that possibly was sexual. We don't know. Well, she became attached to, it seemed like, a lot of guys. You know, yeah. she'd move from one to another. That would kind of help her guide her through life. Yeah, and he was giving her pills, so. Like, oh. Not yeah. only that, but I have a Dr. theory here. <laughs> How about Dr. Killed Good? He's the one that found <laughs> Go her. Go on. He's, you have my he's the one that found her and called 911. Okay, really? but uh, let's backtrack <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. He also might have administered a sedative that didn't end up working, so then he put a pillow over her head and then gave her another fatal injection directly into her heart. This is a theory. Yes. Okay. And then Peter Lawford was contacted to help usher Bobby away, get out of there, and then Lawford from there modified the scene to look like a suicide before the police were called. Wait, so the psychiatrist was hired by Bobby? Yeah, he was in on it. Oh. Is there an official police report that covers and details this? Yes. And what does it say that it was just a very clean crime scene? They showed up and she it was looked dead. looked doctored? No, they said, we showed up, she was already dead. Yeah. We took her away. But the ambulance workers who showed up that day said, no, she was still alive in the ambulance when we were taking her to Santa Monica. What? Yeah, and she died at the hospital. But the police are like... That did not happen. <laughs> yeah, the police <laughs> have caught the bug of the uh, yeah, Kennedy that, that, fucking way the, of talking. The Kennedys are all over the place. <laughs> yeah. That's why it's like I'm such a, a weird thing that the cops are like, no, she was dead the whole time. And the ambulance workers are like, no, we were working on her. She was still alive. She was comatose, but she was breathing. Whoa. And she died at the hospital. And so they think that the police intimidated the the doctors when they were there to be like say she died before let's close this case yeah. <laughs> i mean th this is the time this is the era where you, you know if you, you can could, get away with you shit can like bribe this. people you can mm -hmm. get away with shit yeah just watch la confidential everyone was for sale yeah mm -hmm. the case for suicide she was very depressed she hated herself later in her life after like her many divorces, a uh, reporter was like, but are you happy? And she goes, huh. And then just like totally ignored the question. She said when she was a kid, she, any man or woman that she saw that was like a grown adult, she was like, you could be my parent. Just attached herself to anybody. Yeah. We didn't say it yet. We alluded to it. She was molested as a kid in and out of foster care and orphanages. Not good. This really fucked her head up in life in a, a bunch of different ways. Her friend said she wanted to know her father more than anything in the world. Uh, she even said that she wanted to pick up a wig, put it on, find her b father at a bar, pick him up, 
have him take her home, make love to her so she could tell him, you just fucked your daughter. What? Yeah. Whoa. She was a sicko. Yeah. Wow. So she could get like the ultimate revenge on him. Also a weird thing. She died with her phone in her hand. It was an iPhone. What? Hello! <laughs> Alien technology. <laughs> no, she had her phone on the cord in her hand when she was dead. And it's like, if you're committing suicide, who are you calling? God. Well, it could have been one of those things where I'm, I'm, I'm again, calling God. I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm coming. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> no, I meant the other coming. <laughs> oh, I, shit. I'm jerking off. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you devil. Hide the Yank magazine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My favorite issue. Read it for the articles. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. <laughs> I didn't let the ink dry. That's why the pages are stuck together. <laughs> the patriotic porn magazine. Yay. It's a pinup of Martha Ray with flags over her boobs. Yeah, din, Rosie din, din, the Riveter. Din, 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 jerking me off. Yeah. Um, Anthony Summers, the guy that has all the tapes in the Netflix documentary. Yeah. He says at the end that he doesn't think it was murder. Well, yeah. So here's the thing. This is my consensus, and I think this is the right one. They said she died committing suicide or accidentally killed herself taking an extremely large dose of barbiturates. She died doing what she loved. Yeah. Committing suicide. Yeah. <laughs> she died as she lived. Dead. <laughs> so there was a cover-up is what he was saying. There was definitely a cover-up of her death, but solely because of her connection to the Kennedys. So the cover-up was hiding the fact that she was ever really involved with Bobby. So were they just trying to make sure there was no question that the Kennedys were involved? Yeah. Or there was no weird thing involved? Well, they were nervous because they were like, this bitch is on the phone yapping about confidential information and also talking to people who are expats who are connected to Castro's regime. Like, what is she doing? We're in the middle of the Cold War. They got the Bay of Pigs about to happen. We're all going to be nuked by Cuba and Russia, and we're going to have to fucking figure this shit out. Everything's it, changed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all different now. <laughs> the world is crazy. Yeah, we've gotten yeah. so much better since then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so they were like, we need to make sure that she's never connected to the government or, you know, we weren't over her house getting drunk, talking shit that we weren't supposed to talk. Uh, that makes sense. And maybe. it's not just embarrassment or shame purposes. It's like, Security. we got to save this country. Yeah. We can't let this image be torn. I think it's a little bit of both, but it's mostly self-preservation and, you know, the country. And they didn't want to lose their following that they they had gained yeah. through uh, Jimmy Hoffa. Apparently. Yeah, and <laughs> you should never know what the president is up to in his free time. Well, at those yeah. times, that was before you know they started really getting into the president's business. Like LBJ didn't, you know, he's just a weird guy who just pulled his dick out when he was in meetings. <laughs> but like, but like after that, that's when they first they they started like you know looking into the the lives of presidents and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And then he, it might have been maybe what brought down Richard Nixon too cuz he was a fucking weirdo. I am not a crook. He also I am not a crook. <laughs> he also broke into hotels and yeah. bugged competitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, a no-no in my book. I don't know. Yeah. So in 1982, it was 20 years after her death, the DA in LA opened and closed the Marilyn Monroe case because uh, the office found no new evidence that would suggest that she was murdered. They stuck to the story that she killed herself. It's already, that. it's already hard enough to prove a murder now. But like, yeah. imagine back then, you just like... Yeah, let's solve a murder yeah. from the 60s. Yeah, someone's, some rich businessman's like, nothing happened here. He's like... And the, the, the detective's like, nothing happened here. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, mister. <laughs> this is not the body you're looking for. <laughs> we cannot do anything for you. The really ironic part is Bobby Kennedy would have been just the guy to reopen a case like Marilyn's out of the blue. But well, he got killed by the alphabet bomber's brother. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name again? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No, Sir Han, Sir Han, Sir Han. Oh, Sir that's Han. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I was doing what he said before he killed him. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. 
Well, we're going to do a six-parter <laughs> on, on the uh, Alphabet Bomber. And another six-parter. Uh, on the what? Patreon that's coming soon. Yes. yes. Where we can live without fear of copyright infringement on YouTube. So follow us on Patreon. It's going to be uh, coming up soon. Yeah. In the meantime, <laughs> why do they keep reopening famous investigations just to say, oh, we didn't find anything? Because people got to sell books. That yeah. happened with Bob Crane as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's happening with Natalie Wood right now. The Natalie Wood case, the guy that did actually prosecute someone in the 90s, they got they got Carpy. You mean the Bob Crane case? The Bob Crane case, yeah. yeah. Uh, that guy, he had, he was like, he's ready to, to do it. But he, he, took, he saw the trial all the way through and wasn't able to get a conviction. Right. But That's like, true. You know, he gave it a shot. But he like, did give it the old college some try. People, some people just do it just because they're, they have a re-election coming up. Because they're yeah, it's exactly. elected office, so you yeah. know they're just trying to get some notoriety. I have a couple things to add to the death scene. Throw it on, baby. After she's dead. Okay. You said the doctor found her. The psychiatrist broke her window because the housekeeper said that oh, her thought- bedroom door was locked, and he ran. He showed up. He lived down the street. Uh, banging on the door, she wasn't opening it, ran to her bedroom window, knocking on it, wasn't answering, so he broke the window and went in and found her dead. That's what I was confused by, because I know the housekeeper was there first. Yes. She knew something was wrong, called him at four in the morning. Yeah, see, that's it's where... It's all weird. Four in the morning. Okay, it's all weird. Why is nothing, the housekeeper trying to clean at four in the morning? Nothing good happens after 2 a.m. Or nothing no. normal. Correct. Just ask... Phil Hartman's... Uh, Wife Bryn Hartman, yeah, Bryn yes, Hartman. Yeah. or Dante, Don't have... Dante Stallworth, correct? Yeah, Dwayne Haskins, or yeah. uh, or Robert Downey Jr. when he wound up in that girl's bed, <laughs> his neighbor. <laughs> that's I don't. Know that's even another know that episode. One. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? No. no, no, but we're gonna have to Google it. You don't it. know what I'm talking Leave about. Leave it to their imagination. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> we'll Google it and we'll come back to it next episode. Ain't during a drunk, but I'm interested. Right, well, there was a four hour. <laughs> there was a four hour gap between when the housekeeper supposedly found her dead and the cops arriving. You yeah. want me to wash her ass? And then the first <laughs> cop on the scene, Sergeant Clemens, said it looked staged. He said, "Quote: I had the eerie feeling that I'd come across a murder. It was obvious that some cover up had begun hours before we were called." And. Marilyn's body had bruises like she had fought off assailants. Hmm. As you mentioned, there was no suicide note. Pills were scattered all around, but there was no water glass. Not only that, her bathroom had no running water. Oh, wow. That's an old She was just shitting in the toilet and it was piling up. (laughs) And she was (laughs) naked, stripped of all garments, except... That she was known to wear a bra to sleep. Oh. Wait, what woman? Counterintuitive. What woman by herself would wear a bra to sleep? This is my information. Okay. This is my source. Yeah, this is the blind items. No, no. This actually isn't. This is from a podcast called The Killing of Marilyn Monroe. Oh, that's a rock rock solid source right there. (laughs) (laughs) No, this is from that sergeant, for example. That was direct from his mouth. Oh, okay, okay. From the horse's mouth. The housekeeper, her name was Eunice Murray. Eunuch. Murray. Eunuch Murray. No relation to Bill Murray. You got no balls. Another madman. (laughs) I know. We'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. (laughs) <laughs> so the housekeeper also gave contradicting statements about the scenario when she was interviewed. Yeah. And then a couple weeks later, left the country. No shit. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. Theory is the Kennedys sent her away. Yeah, here's a couple million. Yeah. Go fuck sail here. away. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the publicist as well. Patricia Newcomb. Go, go sail away. <laughs> Patricia Newcomb. Yeah. No relation to Gavin Newsom. <laughs> no relation to Duke Newcomb. Because they both have the word new in their name. Yeah. <laughs> no so relation the, to that other person with a different name. The, <laughs> the publicist <laughs> never gave a statement following the death. Really? And she uh, was, Marilyn Monroe's publicist did Yes. All? Really? And she was sent away just like the housekeeper. 
so they weren't around to answer any questions. Where, to go what? To no what questions, country? please. And that's a to fact. go to what country? This is not a conspiracy. What country did they go to? Borneo. Borneo. They, <laughs> they Borneo. Went, they went all over Switzerland, France, Spain. Wow. Isn't this a little fishy? So they wouldn't have to lie on her oath. The podcaster spoke to the woman on the phone once and asked her, did the Kennedy send you out of the country? This is the publicist. And then she answered, well, I was leaving anyway. Ah, That is so shady. Pretty shady. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty pretty shady. Pretty shady. I mean, it doesn't even end here. Police records disappeared. Marilyn Monroe's organs and tissue samples were missing. Wow. The medical examiner, a guy named Thomas Noguchi, w- was shocked to learn that Marilyn's body parts had been disposed of because the chief toxicologist felt that there were no other tests needed. So imagine Marilyn shows up on his bench here and she doesn't have any organs. She's an empty vessel. They just Follow her out. Is this getting weird or what? <laughs> yeah, this is weird. Noguchi was the same last name of the coroner who dealt with uh, uh, Natalie Brittany Wood. Mur- Not Brittany Murphy? Natalie Wood. Natalie Wood, you're yeah. correct. Yeah, the Japanese guy. Yeah. So 1962, he's still around in 1990. No, 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 no. no, no. no, no. Natalie Wood was 1980. 1980 something. 1981. Wow. Yes, that's right. So it's not yeah, that it's long later. It's, 19, you know, 20 years. 19 yeah. years. And so Noguchi, you know, the chief medical examiner, he ruled that she died of acute barbiturate poisoning and that the manner of death was probable suicide. Mm -hmm. But it should have been listed as unknown. But would they actually make it that more concrete if, like, is it rare for them to give that diagnosis? Because I wonder if it's like, because they never know. Did you say Thomas Noguchi? I did. That's the same guy. Same wow. guy. Same fucking guy. So this guy, he's constantly not really doing his job, <laughs> he, right? He, exactly. <laughs> he did the autopsies for Marilyn Monroe, Albert Decker, RFK, Sharon Tate, Inger Stevens, Janis Joplin, Gia Scala, David Jansen, William Holden, and John Belushi. Whoa. Wow. He was heavily criticized for his autopsy on Diapod Subject, Natalie Wood. Go listen to that episode and you'll hear why. Because I remember that was the end of his career in the Natalie Wood part. I remember re. Uh, I think he's a plant. That. He's on the take. Murderers hire be. this guy Has to and be. say, just say it was something else. Really? I, th- I mean, dude, Marilyn Monroe, RFK, who was murdered, but he was murdered in front of people. So, I mean, Sharon Tate, Janis Joplin, Ham Sandwich. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, no, you're thinking of Mama Cass. That's oh, Mama, Mama Cass. Cass. Yeah, right, that's yeah. right. <laughs> no, Janis Joplin was full on bunch of heroin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the way he says ham, ham sandwich. Yeah, that was really. You sounded like Robin Williams when he said that. <laughs> ham sandwich. Oh, 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 look at me. Oh, I'm a ham sandwich now. Oh, oh, wheat. Ah, lettuce. Ah, tomato. Oh. <laughs> Figaro. Figaro. <laughs> I am a ham. <laughs> ham sandwich. Ham sandwich. And the Gucci. I think Noguchi's on the shit list, He man. listed, <laughs> yeah. He classified Sharon Tate's death as natural causes. Shut up! Just kidding. Oh <laughs> you got me good. Now you're trying to shit start with Noguchi. I'd now. fucking hate Noguchi. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Noguchi. Get the, Fuck make the bumper Noguchi. sticker. Print the bumper sticker. <laughs> He's still alive. He was, born, he? he was born in 1927. Well, that was God the damn. tail end of his career with the uh, Natalie Wood thing. So I think he retired right after that, actually. Yeah, he's like, I'm he done did. covering all this he did, shit yeah. up. And he wrote a book. He remember. sure did. Yeah. That's what all these assholes do. They write a book. Like all these Trump assholes. You yep. know? Well, Marilyn Monroe. Monroe is another case, but the Natalie Hurst driver Wood, wrote a book. Yeah, exactly. Natalie Wood, though that episode we went over all the books everyone's writing. Yeah, everyone's the, the limo driver, the it, hearse driver. The hearse driver drove her around the block and got a book out. This yep. is a capitalist country. Everyone's a scumbag yeah. with their hands out. That's what Marilyn Monroe was trying to prevent by yeah. trying to become a communist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the way, guys, we're gonna set up a Patreon soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fair. Yeah, like of you, course. You Not donate, in a communist country. Donate what you want. Yeah. yeah. But if it's less than $5, don't bother. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> final thoughts. 
Uh, I mean, I was of the opinion that there was a cover up just to get her distanced from the Kennedys for security purposes, for optics. But, you know, if Noguchi's involved, then I think there's some shady shit going on. Well, they bring in Noguchi when, you know, they want it to go away. Yeah. Any, when anyone does, you name it. it I, I don't know if some big Hollywood guy twisted his mustache, like, you know, just trying to get away with all this bullshit. Get Noguchi. Get Noguchi. <laughs> get him to the Gucci. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know really that much about this. I've studied the, the JFK assassination from many different angles. Magic bullet theory. Magic bullet theory, everything about Subruder it. Subruder footage. I've heard people that went up to the grassy knoll. We've talked to people that, yeah. you know, it just it's bullshit. And everything around this time is unclear to me. Anything and I, I thought like things were more clear now, and they're, I, we're finding out they're really not. Yeah. So we're never going to know anything. We're not meant to be. We're the pinions that are you know not meant to know anything. The higher ups, the uh, the you know the higher class. We're the pawns in the system. Know, yeah, the Jeffrey Epstein's. That's who. The, that's who knows all this shit. We don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're yeah. never gonna find out. I think that it's closer to Bobby Kennedy had something to do with it. Either ordered it or covered it up. Murdered her. I don't think the and psych- covered it up. I don't think the psychiatrist would do that to her because I think he was trying to fuck her. If he wasn't banging her. Well, I think psychiatrists in this time were not really on the up and up. No, he might have been on the take. But it could have been. He was already doing well. It could have been orchestrated that she went to the psychiatrist from someone else. Like, hey, one of Bobby's people, did you go to the psychiatrist? You know, and then then all of a sudden they get a hook into her. Then all of a sudden he's pulp fictioning her, putting a needle into her heart. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I don't fuck it. Like, we're not going to. Well, we solved it. Or did we? <laughs> <laughs> you said we were going to solve this. I, thought- I found it. I found the motive. Peter Lawford called Dr. Greenson, and he said that if Marilyn goes public, he can kiss his psychiatric career goodbye. See, mm. well, that, 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 been some that blackmail plays there. into the whole capitalist thing because everyone needs their their livelihood. <sighs> In L.A. is... <laughs> imagine, like, some second-rate actor like Peter Lawford. Like, imagine Paul Rudd calling you saying, like, you can kiss your fucking, you know... <laughs> even uh, less than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, even way less than Paul. <laughs> Paul Rudd's, like, a big star. Yeah. Like, Sean William Scott. Like, the guy... <laughs> like, Stifler, his Stifler's calling you. He's saying you'll never work in this <laughs> yeah. town again. I'm the hey, guy from... By the way, you got any work? <laughs> you'll never be a dude with my car, uh, too. <laughs> doctor, we got Jason Biggs on the phone for <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> He's got some big news. Yeah. <laughs> You're finished. You'll never work in this town again. Yeah. Uh, you got a job for me? Can we reboot the pie? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Well, uh, audience, what do you think? Yeah. Let us know. Email us. Email us. Or comment on YouTube, everyone else's. Yeah, Samantha, Sabrina, send us some emails. What are your thoughts? Yeah. We appreciate it. Mr. Leggett, also on YouTube, he always leaves some thoughtful comments. No comment. <laughs> but we love all of you. Yeah. What do we and, got? Huh? So what do we got? We got a murder. We got a conspiracy. Let us know. Yeah. Death and Entertainment at gmail.com. Diepod2021 on Twitter. Yep. Instagram at Death and Entertainment. Yep. Where we will see pictures of, we didn't even get into this. Um, I thought this was a fact that Marilyn Monroe had six toes on one foot. She does not. That is a, a rumor. She's and that's the, one thing we can put to feet, bed. Web feet? No. She might have web feet, but she doesn't have six toes. That was the whole thing. There was another urban legend that she had her ribs removed so she could have a thinner <laughs> waistline. <laughs> No, was, I, I thought she should, so she could suck her own dick. Like uh, <laughs> that's Marilyn Manson did that. Yeah, right? '90s icon Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I, we I, never talked about Marilyn Manson. Actually, I think you it. might need a dick to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll follow up on that. We'll, that that'll same, be the postmortem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That same rumor was later applied to Cher and Lady Gaga. Nice, good for them. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you very much, guys. Have a nice week. Peace. We love you. It's not the ending we want. It's the ending you deserve. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We give you that ending because you deserve it. (laughs) Goodbye. Boo, goodbye. You have just heard... A true Hollywood murder mystery. I have never seen anything like this before. 
movies, Broadway, music, television, all of it. A place that manufactures nightmares. Okay, everybody, that's a wrap. Good night. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon.